What's happening, everyone? This is a Just Slabbering show. What's happening? We're here today with that? a very special guest, young Spencer. Nice to meet you, mate. Appreciate it's good that to meet you, bro. It's good to have you on the show. Thank um, you very much, mate. I first met you at a boxing show last year. Did all right. I was coming out of the toilet. You were coming out of the toilet. <laughs> I came there. I was there with my dad and this bouncer fella I brought with me, um, Dylan. And Dylan says to me... Um, there's young Spence over and all. I want you to meet him and all. He's a good lad and all. And I hadn't heard much. And he says his brother's fighting in this card oh, and all. And I says, what? So I went over and met you, shook your hand and all. And Dylan said, he's got a big following him. But I had never heard nothing of you. Nothing of you. And then I started hanging about here in Belfast for a while <laughs> longer. Dear sake, it wasn't long before I heard your name. About a hundred times. Being good. So, ah, we're blessed at this point, mate. Blessed. Been rapping 14 years, like, so it's a long time. I noticed that when I checked out your YouTube then, when I scrolled down, I seen oh. that you've been releasing music See, for the thing is, time. with the music, mate, it's it's obviously, you know, we're preaching to the choir, it's, it's your story, it's what, you know, when it comes from a deep, dark place, it doesn't just come from, like, usually, oh, I want to do a bit of rapping. Yeah. So, Sometimes people, especially now, don't get me wrong, it's a blessing, but people get lost in the hits and the ones that do the most numbers. Some people ask me all the time, like, what's your favourite song? They're like your babies or like your kids, you know, it's like you can't really sort of pick, but you'll have ones you're more proud of and whatever, and they'll be the deeper ones and ones that people sort of have to go and search for. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they do and they don't, whatever, but either way, the fact now that somebody's willing to look me in the eye, give me their time and be like, yo, I appreciate what you're doing. You inspire me. That I means the word. That's that's not the money. It's that. That's what drives you. That's what keeps me going. Like, of course, no. Listen, it's the dream in a nutshell. Like, and I tell you this now, a lot of kids around here. So even what happened today, they're sick. Yesterday, I said I was driving. I picked up my wee daughter, and I had my daughter over bus. Had my daughter, and I was driving, and um, I picked up my wee um, cousin, and she goes. Uh, and Emily's talking to her about music, and then she goes, uh, "My favorite rapper's Young Spencer. Have you ever heard of Young Spencer?" And then I and then I picked up and says, "Young Spencer." And I says, I, "I'm um, I'm doing a podcast with him tomorrow." And she didn't believe me. She goes, "You are not no." So I says, "Come on, I'll bring her down." She brought, went down there and met. He's got the photos taken and everything. Certainly, because that's that. That's made you know yourself. That's that give back. That's that. That's that is what keeps you doing it. Do you know yeah. what I mean? When you're having your worst days and it's shit and you don't want to do it no more and you're fed up and you feel like you're not getting anywhere and when somebody comes up to you and gives you their time, and it's, yo, know, you inspire me, you motivate me, thank you, or even just, look, I'm seeing what you're doing, it's helping me find me, I love it, I enjoy it, that is what, that's that's the movement in itself, yeah. that is what keeps you pushing yes. on them days, and we all get to meet, you know, it's like, I, I'm a rapper, I sometimes don't want to talk about my life, sometimes I can't be annoyed, I'm going through shit, or I'm, I don't even walk home from work the long way, working a boys' man, I don't even walk home the long way, it takes me like two and a half hours to walk home. Yeah. It's like, fella, what's happening, what are you at? <laughs> and if I'm in a good mood, I, I give you the skin off my back, you get all my time, but sometimes you just want to get home and you can't be annoyed, but then we moments, put a smile on your face and an even bigger smile on your heart that lets me know you're finally doing something worthwhile. Yeah. You've finally found your purpose. You've finally... It's so, so you. true. So do you do any, like, uh, like uh, do you do any community work or anything? Or? Oh, I mean, well, for a long time, or what we were doing was we were doing meet and greets because you were what was happening was you were getting people... Sometimes we'd do, like, a big group meet and greet and we'd be on the shangle or we'd be somewhere here and there and... We'll just tie in, done them alarm, pour it down everywhere. Um, we'll give a whole load of merch away and whatever. And most of the time, that's the thing. Right? People see the flags, the t-shirts and mugs and all, and they'll be like, he's raking it in, he's yeah. rolling it in. Yeah. Know yourself, don't be like that. You're investing more than you're getting back. And sometimes, like especially we'll go to Port Down, we we'll do the Bonefire Festival down there. You're talking 20,000 people, mate. Yeah. All walks of life. Some of them kids down there, I mean, they're on four. Some of them kids we'll see, no word of a land, they'll have the same clothes on from the year previous. Yes, of course. And when I see kids like that, it's like, that's that's the dream. Like that's no, I mean, I've never, I, for, for lack of better words, fuck the money at that point. The yeah. money, money, paper, you print it every day. We'll make more of it. Of course, if you can give that kid a t-shirt, wee hat, whatever it is, yeah. a photo, maybe something that they hold on to that we yeah didn't forever. Have Listen, we I know age. that it's so so true, my bro, and it is, and it does mean a lot to them. So I met some young lads there. And, they're in their 20s now, and they were saying to me, like, oh, you give me a CD when you were 17, when I was 17 and all, and they've held on to that, and, they, you know, it means a lot more. Sometimes, too, I think, mate, them wee reminders on the journey help you get 
back in check. Sometimes you lose your way yes. doing what we do. It's and sometimes true. you can't. Like I've noticed that in the last year or two. Life's completely flipped, completely changed. I'm not me as a person, I'm not used to attention at all, mate, genuinely. Yeah. I don't like private didn't have Facebook or Instagram until I was about 21, 22. Cause yeah. just take a piss out of me for it, parties and all. Yeah. But I didn't really like it because I like a private life. Yeah. But then when it's time So were you making music but you had no social media or when did you start? Just, oh I made yes for years. So what happened was I've been making music me from was about on and off, one foot in, one foot out from was about fourteen years of age. Like. Right. And, and I, what and what was what genre would you call it? Is it just rap or Because when I listen to the, the background beats, not it's not like rap, it's like Mate, I, see to be honest, I just sort of I sometimes mate, I, I just I like the idea of just just Wrapping off what I feel. If it talks to me, then I yes, talk on it. Yes, of course. It. Yeah. So, I mean, whatever, whatever inspires me. You could be, you could be somebody I'd say, you know what I mean, banging on the pavement or shit. So. If I find a way on it, if it inspires me, it makes me want to say something on it. Then, of course. That's so, it. who, do, who was your, like, who inspired you then, like musically, when you were first? What about Eminem? Like Eminem. Oh, one of my favorite songs of all time is Mockingbird. Mockingbird. Oh, about sit. his daughter. Oh, and we used to. The reason why a song holds such a place in my heart is because me and Bro, who's one of the we grew up like that. Of course. Like a lot of us, mate. Broken yeah. families. And so when I'm staying away, or when I'm not with him, and yeah. maybe at times I didn't grow up with my ma, he did. It was mm -hmm. just me and my dad the whole way through. Uh, yeah. Didn't and have just bro. related with yeah. it for like... Make a long story longer. We didn't have bro, and with the fight to get him, and we personal things that you'll know what I mean. Of course. Like, we got him back. I was our only hope in life. Militant. Yeah, yeah of genuinely, course. Genuinely, truthfully honest with you, before rap, before any of um, it's mad music the way it's so mad the way music can yeah, become so personal to you so, as well like, and it brings back all them memories of because as, as you it. say mate as him as him talking to his own daughter he's yeah. talking to millions of kids and I was one of the kids he was talking yes, to course. and then you're 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 consigned with the, the white thing too you're looking at him and you're going yo white fella like me. yeah 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 in this predominantly black industry that yeah. you're sort of told like, these boys won't ever really get anywhere. We had, so you're looking at that too, and you're like, can I do this? Like, but it really came from, didn't like speaking to people, didn't went to enough counsellors and solicitors and all that, didn't really go to school. And that was hip hop, was just, it was home. It, it was like, yeah, space of, of mind. And I was like, I wonder, can I, can I do something along these lines? Can I? So when my first, before it was even recording music, it was just Sick. a wee diary, writing down what's in your mind. If you can get it out of here and get it on the page, look back at it, maybe you can move on from it. 100%, that's real. Oh, aye. And then it became, you know, it's like, it's a drug, it's addictive. You're like, yeah, of course. Yeah, I should record this. Yeah. Like, I, what I was a called. sensitive kid, so like, when mm. I wrote a rap, you know, I was writing, I wrote a rap and I'd done it to my mates, and then all my mates went ballistic for it. <laughs> See, if they all had a said, hmm, or laughed, I wouldn't have probably done it because I was a bit sensitive, so it is a bit I addictive. And they all go, ah, oh, I love I that. I get bro. you because you know? for a long time, mate, like, you're, I'm not even 100% accepting the idea yeah. I could be a rapper. So if I'm not accepting it, in retrospect, looking back at it now, you see why it takes you a bit longer together because you're not wholeheartedly yeah. believing it's impossible because yeah. you're asking yourself to believe in something that you've never seen being done before. Of course. Especially where we're from. Yes. And that's why then too, when you get to certain points on a journey, they mean it means more than money. When somebody comes up to you and they're like, yo, you're a pioneer right here. And I told you, I mean, no bullshit, no word of a lie, I said that to you that day at the fight. You did. I'm not going to blow smoke up here. I'm not going to be like, oh, I'm the biggest fan. But yeah. you're a pioneer out here, mate. You're you a forefather. And you were rapping before this. I know that feeling of rapping when cunts are laughing. Yeah. When they're laughing at you. Yeah, yeah. And it's first the laugh at you, then the clap for you, and then the copy. Yeah. And only the genuine ones will <laughs> yeah. circle back around and be like, you inspired me from yeah. the start when I was laughing. I was just afraid to separate myself yeah. from the crowd. It's true. Listen, that is uh, that is very true. And um, I did notice that a lot. I mean, like even like disgruntled fans, you know, oh, you'd wow. have like people at first, I'd have people and I'd have, you know the way you have like a request inbox. Mm -hmm. So in the request inbox and like Facebook, when I first even found out about it, I didn't know it existed and I had like loads of them. Mm -hmm. But I clicked on one of the messages and it was like, I'm your biggest fan, love you. Will you respond back to me? Please message me back. Why aren't you messaging me back? You know what? Fuck you. Oh, in what? fact, listen to you fat fucking... Back. And, and it changed and I was like, whoa, and I read it all. And I had it all in front of my eyes. Like, I was the first and you time reading it all. Oh, you watch somebody go yeah. from up on the top of a hill, we do like, yo, I'm pulling you to the bottom, you know what I mean? It's like, it's this entitlement, yeah. and it becomes this thing of like, and to be truthfully honest, mate, like, it has become a bit of a personal struggle for me in the last year or two, because as I say, life's completely different. So it goes from, like, we worship you, till, ah, but you're not doing what we want you to do now. So, yes. mm. 
So I'll tell you that this is the key. This is what I learned to right? Like, say when anyone says, oh, you're the best and I love you and all, and you've done so, take that with a pinch of salt as same Thank as, you. same as when you, someone goes, see you, you're a big piece of shit. Really? Take all that with a pinch what of I salt. Live by, you, know? you live by the tears, yeah. you'll die by the boots. Yeah. So, like, I had, I, I handled loads of, like, criticisms, like I didn't care about them. But then when I was in Spain and I, I hadn't seen my daughter for a while. Mm. And I was talking about all the restrictions and everything, you know, and I was going mad about it, you mm -hmm. know, saying, I'm not wearing no mask on. No. <laughs> a couple of people from over here, some fella and all, like, screenshotted a photo of, like, me and my daughter and put, it. like, a, like the it face on her. Oh, but that was me that I, I fed into oh, it. I was like, I'm going to kill you and all. I was ready. Do, but that, but yeah. that's the part that they don't understand. Yeah, it's like, of course. They, you, like, when we go home at night, the lights go off. We're with ourselves, by ourselves. It's yeah. the same as, I don't knock nobody, but you know yourself. A lot of boys do what we do and they talk about everything but their own life of course and when you try and give them advice it becomes who yeah. you think you are yeah. you, you, it's like no one don't think we're anyway we know who we are we're comfortable in who we are but we're trying to give you a gem as also like be you tell yeah. your story there's 8 billion people running about you yeah. want to tell everybody else's story for Yeah. tell it's your true. own story and then you know what it's like you get to meet some of these people and it's a facade yeah. And it puts you right. off. Yes. Because there's no real chemistry, there's no real yeah. connection. You're yeah. just like, mate, you're not even believable yeah. in yourself. Well, it's happened a hundred times. They're sick, me and Danny doing the, the Cali cave, and we were getting rappers over and all, 90% of the time, and they're at Danny saying, see, they're not all but you cry. You know, you, they have this image in their and head. But oh, it's, and it's that's not real. why, mate, like, we hang it happen with the kids and all. That's why, and I do, like, I, I'll, I'll call it like you do. You get you get a lot of shit from people trying to be like, ah, oh, your farm base full of kids. Full. It's like, what you don't realize is, it's generations. Uh, bro, that, it's that's generations. Like, we done a show in the Woodville Park, mate, and it was literally grandparents, parents, and their kid. So Course. who's the fool? Course. That's generations Course. coming through, listening to a message, and if I'm consciously aware of it, yeah. then I know, yo, I have to start saying something there, Gareth, come on. You have yeah. to start talking. To and this is only, and you'll see it even, like, because um, see how, like, the tracks then of yours that have blew up as well, they're only a couple of years old, aren't they? Some of them. Right. It was so, COVID, mate. Yeah, so I'm telling you this now as well, you haven't even seen the generational, because I've seen it, like, I released my songs 12 years ago, so I've got guys now coming up here, a big man, who'd be like, I grew up listening to you, grew and that's what you're going to have, in 10 years time mm -hmm. all them kids who everyone's saying are just kids listening to it they'll all be adults they grow and, and they put their yes, kids on the, and, and that's then exactly, they do you know what I mean exactly. it's, it's, just, it's, a, it's a generational yeah, thing that bro, passes is, through and that's why too now more than ever it is a, it's a I'm consciously aware of I know who's in my supporter base and I know who's not yes. so before you come to try and remind me oh, I, I know so this is why I am really conscious now of what I say. I don't want to be just out here talking any shit. We've done that, we've accumulated the numbers, you've got the wee bit of a buzz, people know who you are. Right, now you've got their attention. What are you going to tell them? What are you going to let them live with? What are you going to plant in their mind? Because shit needs to change out here. And people's going to watch it and be like, he thinks he, ain't, yes, he, thinks he knows everything. No, I don't think I have every answer, but I want to try and find the answer. Course. Let's show them a better way. If a kid's looking up to me, what's the point me leading them down a bad path? If I can help them avoid a roadblock that I had to deal with, I'm certainly going to do it then. Course. Because then, if that kid is ever fortunate and you're fortunate enough to have an opportunity to meet them again, as you say, when they're grown, then it becomes like, yo, you've helped me. Yeah, and when you get right. them wee messages and it's like, yo, you saved my life. Or, I mean, I go, not going to lie. I mean, I go back to the same bedroom that I started this dream in and tears leave my eyes, cry my eyes out. Because yeah, I do at times just be like, why, God? Like, what? Nah, why? no, it's true. It's real, bro. I know, like, even that song you posted up in mine, you know, a cause, um, not a cause we're living for, um, Here Lies a Soldier. So I wrote yeah, that. that, that. But, I, but I wrote that on the, the, the night my uncle died. My uncle was from the Shankill as well, and I wrote that the night he died. And, like, I was only doing it to. It was for me. It yeah. was all for me. Oh, yeah, and that's then, where like, it starts. You know, I, yeah, exactly. It was all self therapy. And that, what I see, what I'm, what I'm, I put a hang on Instagram. I'm about it. Sort of like, in my own words, it was like the relationship between artist and supporter. And it was like, you almost get lost in how much you demand of us. Yeah. You forget how much you demand of us. And you, like, I have family and whatever, and they all have their own wee vibes and. Yo, you need to do more. Yo, we need that heartbreak spans. I'm like, but fucking spans has to be heartbroken. Yeah. Yes. I don't really want to be heartbroken. I'm not going to go yes. lie, so I don't want to be in. I yeah. can't. Like, I you know mean, exactly what you're saying, you bro. It has I, to be authentic. It has to be yeah. authentic. You have to authentically be you and what you're doing always. It's never going to work. Yes. My favourite singer, John Prime. He, he's dead now, like, um, I loved him, but my dad, he, my dad grew up listening to him in jail, and I listened to his album, blew me away, but I listened to an interview of him, and he said, see artists, 
we only ever really live in between heart heartbreaks and relationship uh -huh. ending. Yeah. He says, see, when you're in a relationship, you don't really want to write a song and you're happy and you're Thank cracking you. on. He says, see, when you're just split up, are. see, you're ready there, I'll write heartbreak and I'll crack on and do loads. But you need to live, you need to. I listened to Lauren Hill saying the exact same thing. Lauren Hill said, I made that album. And then she goes, but you, I, and she goes, I went in the studio after that. She goes, I made music that you all probably would have liked, but I realised it wasn't the same as that. It's like this album. Album, the Troubles mm -hmm. that took me seven years to make and it. it's like and it's the it's an auto it's like an audio autobiography of my family history mm -hmm. I talk about my great grandfather my granda my dad yeah. me and Adam moving away They're bringing people to you know? that's what they forget that's what goes over their heads at times like they get yeah. lost in the fact it's a song but it's a real story it's not fabricated yeah. and the thing is and I'm sure you've met it a load of times you be, what people don't see is you be met with resistance by these family members yeah. Because they start looking at you at times like, yo, that's my part in your story. I don't want to share that. Yeah. And you're, you're, it's a constant, it's a conflict. Because people are like, yo, I love that song. That helped me and helped my family. But what you don't realise is I had to go through, through shit with my dad, my mom, my bro, whatever, because they heard that and they were like, we don't want to share it. Mm -hmm. But I've sh chosen to share my truth. And so it's, it has to become a thing of, well, why are you like it or not? It's yeah. part of my story and it helps shape me and it helps mold me. Yes, I do and get it. I know what you mean. And I feel a wee bit like, because I agree 100%, but then at the same time, like, I've got mates as well and they've wrote songs about their family, you know, like their their mm -hmm. dad, no, you know, was on drugs and all. And uh, I do know he suffered the same. He mm -hmm. said, like, a lot of his family would say, like, oh, you know, there'd be a bit it's like all, a uh, But like he said, he's sharing his truth. And he's thinking, that was my dad. Well, it. I'm telling you how and I feel, And I feel, feel you like, know? mate, at the end of the day, if you're, as long as you're a gifted life, because that goes over people's heads, it's a fucking gift. Yeah. As long as you're gifted it, that's your only right, if any right you're, you have. Yeah. Share your truth. See, I was, it's your fucking truth. See, I had no problem because I was like proud of my dad, oh. even though what my dad done, he done, you know, and then he became a preacher. And all. Like I said, I seen you when you went to Barcelona with your brother and oh, your dad, bro and, dad. and you said my two best mates or something, and I loved oh, that. And I thought, because the best fellas, mate, that's, that's always been that from day one. I related oh, with that because oh, I thought my big brother. I even the song I done with Adam, the um, Bloody Brothers. I was listening to it earlier on in the bath, and I got no word of lies. I was listening to it earlier on. Yeah, and again, he's like my best mate, you know what I mean? I'd die for him in a heartbeat, you know, and then my dad, oh. bro, I like, I've always been a daddy's boss, so I had two Same. songs dedicated to my Same. dad on the album as well. See, you I know love what I mean? stuff like that, mate. Like, people come to me all the time and be like, what's your favourite song? And usually my answer is, don't have a favourite of loads of favourites, but the song I'm most proud of is a song about my dad. It's so, called Me and You Dad. Is that what you say to them? Because I say yeah. the exact same. Me when and anyone ever says to me, what's your favourite song? I say, it's a cause worth living for. It's yeah. a story about my dad's life. You it's know? a powerful song. Like, yeah. and, it's, and it's them. It's, I love that. I haven't even heard that one. Oh, you. What's it called? You and me, Dad? Me and you, Dad. Me and you, Dad. 25 years in. If you knew my dad, you'd say, oh, you're him. Best mates. My dad's <laughs> my heart and soul. Uh, so, 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 sort of what, it, what I'd realised right and quick was as you're getting older we don't give our loved ones our flowers while they're here to smell them we'll wait till they're not here and we'll put a rose at their grave and sit beside them and be like a miss you yeah. tell them why you're here yeah. and no. if you don't have a relationship and that's one thing like I didn't I grew up with one parent after like 12 years old it was just me and my dad bro wasn't with us he was with my man we had to like yeah. move mountains like when I say we had to run around the whole world to get bro back, we had to yeah. do that. That's that was my life's mission with my dad. Jeez, shit. So when when we when I have moments like that in the music, it's like I, it makes me laugh and sometimes be like, I only do it for the money, but no, I do this to give my dad hope. Yeah. I used course. to sit with my dad in my fucking arms in yeah. the bedroom, mate, crying my eyes out, and him being like, yo, so you're never going to get your brother back, just leave it alone. And I'm holding him, like, I'm the child, but I'm holding my, like, cuddling yeah, my dad course. and being like, yo, dad, like, trust me, mate, we're never giving up. We're yeah. spouse fellas, we don't do that. You instill yeah, that. I was sure. like, we're going to get him back. And we always said that. That was life's mission. So, to be honest, as much as, hey, I'm fully aware you have to work hard and, you know I mean, dreams are going to take time, mate, anything else in comparison to that doesn't really matter because that was our whole life's mission. And then mine was always get bro back and make sure you and bro stuck to him. It's not enough to be like, see you, see you at Christmas and happy birth. Fuck all that. Yeah. You're right beside me, Spans fellas, running around the world. Because <laughs> that's how we make it. We chase dreams. That's how the fuck we get out of here. That's how the fuck we get out of here. Chase dreams till you catch him. Yes, and if anybody fella. tries to get in the way of it, cut them out of it. Yeah, man. And 
I always look down at it like, do you know what? It might not work and we might fail or we might fall flat in their face, yeah. but at least I can have a clear conscience knowing I didn't expect my ma or my dad or anybody out of here to grab my wee bro and be like, yo, this is the way. No, I want to be like, this is the way life works yeah. in my ability and to my opinion. Yeah. And if I can show you and I can prove to you with this music, and bro seen me probably more than anybody rack my brain, I used to call bro and bro, we hear this new song, the song will be shaped. Yeah. Be yeah. terrible, be complete yeah. accent, be yeah. on like a fucking yeah. neo remix or something, yeah. be on some yeah. stupid shape. I call him, and then I do, like he's busting the ground with a mates, yeah. and I'm sitting there like, yeah. what's he thinking? And if it, again, like you said, <laughs> if he laughs, if dad laughs, because they cut you to a bone. Yeah. So if they laugh, you're like, yeah, fuck, fuck this. Shit, this is going to be over. Like, yeah. I never forget my dad when I first time. I was, mate, see, just working up that nerve to be like, yeah. dad. I I I write like me. I would see him coming up the stairs, and I'm writing, and I'd be like, "Hey, Dad!" And I yeah, yeah. I just panic because I always was afraid. I mean, the world can love me, but save my wee dad, my wee bro, don't support it. Like, yeah, of course. I'm fucked. Like I, I so then it, it became right. Well, the only way you're going to do that, Gav, is to be you. You're going to have to make them feel emotions that maybe they don't want to feel, and that's where that song comes from. My dad, first time he ever heard it, he didn't even listen to the whole song right through. Yeah, so well, comes, it was a bit too uh, emotional. Too emotional. I mean, my dad's not really. He's like, yeah. he'd come across as cold at times. You ask anybody that knows him from the community through football, Shankle Juniors or anything, they love him. They, yeah. He'd be held in high regard, and I've watched that yeah. growing up, so I've always knew respect from an early age and honesty. My dad cut you to a bone. Yeah, cold as fuck sometimes, cut you to a bone. But in doing that, that helped me yeah. find the confidence to be able to do that, to be then, when I'm at a certain age, yo, dad, this is our roof now. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. when I need to tell you, you're instead of you just running through life thinking, I'm right because I'm your dad. No, you're not. You're yeah. wrong with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what our relationship is, mate. We fight more than we talk. But, yeah. you know what I mean, I'm him all over, Jeez, mate. Yeah. Cup of tea, slippers on. That's those. Nah, I love that, bro. I love that. There's a few things you said. My mum said to me, she said to me, um, don't buy me flowers when I'm dead. She says, buy me flowers while I'm alive, uh, you know? Yeah. And that's and then it's the same like with my dad, you know, like loads of times my dad could have died, you know? And um, my dad said to me, like, you know, the way I feel as well, like, you know, there's nothing unsaid. You know, if he exactly. dies, to, if he died today, God forbid. Exactly. Like, you know, I've said I'm everything. I'm always you know, so conscious you know? of the last thing that I say to people. I yeah. hate leaving shit on bad terms. It's true. And I, even if I know I'm going to have to walk away with more of the hurt yeah. and harboring more of the burden, that's all right. That's sweet. At so least I true. can live with my conscience as time goes on, and I know you got the truth from me. That's so whether true. it be with a girl, whether it be with family, whatever it may yeah. be, you got my heart. You yeah. got me. Uh, yeah. I poured it out to you. And if you're going to fault me for that, well, so then you're true. clearly not secure so within true. yourself. And that's something we're all guilty yeah. of, mate. And it's just people yeah. want to wait till people's not here to be like, yo, I wish I had a... Make wishes come true. Be a genie. Exactly, Be bro. a fucking genie. And, and you know what? It's not that hard either, you know, yeah. the, to resolve issues. You yeah. know, and even if, like, you know, with, like you said, with girls, family, friends, oh. anything, you know, and even if that's it, you're cutting links or something, you can still end it on a... Oh, because I mean, the way I look at it too is... If they're not at your point of mental maturity, yeah. at some point they will be. So then you can always have room for that conversation that, yo, how are you? Keeping well, you're good. At least you can have that at the very least. And it doesn't have to be, oh, for fuck's sake, look who it is. And you put the head down and you're yeah, avoiding exactly, them. And, and then you're, you have this nah. hatred and it's, it's, yeah. you're holding on to it. And they end up moving on with their life so and you're true. holding on to it. It's so true, bro. And that hatred shit, all it does is eat you up. It is, and then it reflects on how you feel about other it's people, so and you just become cold-hearted. Bro, see that fella I told you about there who done that photo thing and all on the Facebook. Mm -hmm. I would never even met him in real life, but because I didn't just block him or ignore him, and let all it got consumed by hatred. I was sat in Spain chilling, loads of weed, fucking driving down to the beach. I was thinking about that. I didn't even know where he was because you got consumed. You can easily get consumed that's it. by it, what, you know? What they forget is it's like a teacher with students, mate. There's fucking loads of Emmons, and there's one of us. Yeah. There's only one of us, and yeah. you, you just all want our time, and yeah. you just all want this from us and want that from us. And if we give you everything we have, we've not left for ourselves. Yeah. So sometimes that's why I, but I have to just be honest, I don't really be on social media much. And people's yeah. gonna say, I'm like, oh, I did on. No, I genuinely I don't really yeah. like it. I'll take six months, eight months, yeah. bro, I'll tell you, off it. I'll go and live life, I'll book flight, I'll do whatever I can with a family, because that, to me, it's it's the balance between... It's such like a high-pressure, um, oh. like, performance thing as well. Oh. Everyone's waiting to hear your new thing, oh, well. but you haven't got enough time to even just sit and write. Yeah, it's, it's, and oh. You're always wanting, the, you know what I mean? It it's is. Like, it's like I a, can't give you new experiences unless I live through yes, new experiences. Yeah. 
or otherwise it's going to be you keep saying the same thing over and over yeah. again. Oh, well, I need time to go and listen. So people yeah. are like, yo, Spans Fall, when's the music coming? When I get time by myself to sit, recollect my thoughts and sit and pour out my heart, that's when it will come. Yes. And then there's other things. I'm sure you're the same. You have things that you keep up top for like maybe years to come. There's things that I know I want to talk about, but I'm not secure yeah. enough in myself. I'm not ready yet as a person, as Gareth, <laughs> yeah. to be able to transcend to that level. And that's what they don't get. Everybody wants what they want from John Zoo and Young Spencer, but what about Johnny and Gareth? Yeah. Nobody gives a fuck about them. People yeah. don't really care. Only the ones that you can go back to who knew you as that before you were yeah. what you became. Yeah, I know what you're saying, but the, like my my sisters and everything, they all said though the truth is like, see like even the John Sue thing. This is the God's honest truth with me. It was always just me. Like I never even give a a single fuck about any of it. Yeah. The, the 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 social media thing that I do find a wee bit of like a. Like a, it's like a creative sucker or something too. Oh, like, can't be yeah, on. if like, say if someone, say if I don't have uh, my phone died or something, and, I, and I've got a beat on, I'll sit there for hours. I could write songs and all and just mm -hmm. chill. But when you've got the phone, it's like a constant interrupter or yeah. something. Oh, it's you constant know what I mean? distraction, mate. And, and then you're, you, you yeah. everybody says, it, don't care. Every you throw we picture up, you can't have. Oh, who's like that? Yeah. Then you start. Oh, she like that. Yeah. And then you start. Ours a wee story. I'll react to that. And then before you know, exactly. three hours have passed. I've had yeah. ten cups of tea and I've done fuck all music. Exactly. And I'm like, right, come on. Then so that's why I need to just distract, get away from it, just yeah. disconnect from the globe to reconnect with my soul. That's yeah. how I put it. So it was funny because like. I spent, I, I worked on, I was doing rapping from when I was young, young, and I was releasing loads of mixtapes. You ever remember the first song you ever wrote? The, the first, so, like, rap song? First song you ever Well, played. I remember the first song. I was writing wee raps and all from oh. my mates as, like, we, I, I, funny enough, I can still even... Um, do you remember? Yeah, it goes, <laughs> um, oh, I do, it goes, um, now, I, again, it's, bro, I was 12 years old, and yeah. I was all into the Illuminati and everything, mm -hmm. and the Freemasons and all, lying to yeah. us, and all the, the secret societies and all, you mm -hmm. know, because I'm against all that, bro, big time. I get you. You know, like, secret societies I and all, the spies. My first ever rap, bro, I was 12 years old. Now, I don't hate the Illumin, just the things they be doing. They be acting inhuman, time to start proving, stop assuming. Now, I'm not a liar. Revelation 2, yeah, why do yeah. you nations conspire and follow a false messiah, soon to be burning in eternal fire? Trust me, these ain't lies. Why are you people not believing that they're in your life with pyramids and all seeing eyes? Got a normal Christian living deprived and only a few oh, right. survived. 144,000 tro so chosen soldiers stayed alive. And yo, I like my enemies, how I like my bud blazed up. My eyes are glazed <laughs> up. Trigger hit fingers, I hear's fuck. Scars on my hand from cigarette butts. When I was only 13 and running out of luck. Yeah, I was like 13 or 14. Oh, that. You called me a ghost writer for yeah. somebody? I wrote that, bro, I know I was 13, like, Four, I was mm. I was in high school and I wrote that and I used to go around everywhere and that was my that first was your rap. One, no, I, you know? I call then, it like stacking ammo yeah. or stacking ammo. So and then I, I recorded that then when I was like fifteen and I was got with like three other guys from the area. Class, you man. know that was. I don't us. really. To be fair, I don't. I remember the first first thing I'd ever pieced together musically, right? Because uh, I was writing down what was going on with me. It was, it was a song called "I'm Sick of My Life." It was the first thing I ever recorded. Sick. And that's it comes. I'm people. sick of my life. I'm sick of that's my what life, my yeah. mate Pro's done a song called "I'm Sick" and he does the same thing. It's uh -huh. Like he starts every line with "I'm sick of this, I'm sick of that." Sick of my life. Can man. you it remember? Was just, it? No, man, I can't yeah. remember any of the bars. So, like, but it was just, it was, it was frustration. It was heartbreak. It was everything rolling into one. And what it really was is, I don't really get a chance to talk about this much when you're out and you're just meeting people whenever. But what it really was, mate, was it was. Um, it was like my suicide letter, mate. Yeah. To be truthfully honest with you. Yeah. Because I had at that point I had just convinced myself life wasn't worth living like. Yeah. I just I didn't want it no more. Wow, uh, so your first song was sort of a bit like a suicide uh, letter? And I was like, Hi, the I break my wee dad's heart if I just left, break bro's heart. Yeah. I haven't seen my man, we don't have a relationship at that point. But yeah. I'm like, still our son, still break her heart and I'm like I need to leave something like, and uh, there has to be, and that, that really was the thought. And I know yeah. some people maybe look at it and be like, Oh, I did it, but that from my heart that that was what that was at that point, and it was like only it became addictive, mate. And I fell in love with rapping. Yeah, that that would have been it. Like that would have been what was left, mate. Yeah, that's yeah. why I say like wholeheartedly, so, save my life. So get on this, bro. I'll tell you the straight up truth. So I moved to Manchester in 1996. That was the same year that the I R A bloody R and D events. Yes, <laughs> right, and then I went to school in Moss Side, right, which was like predominantly black. But um, 
there was a lot of like, you know, the white lads and all that would all say and all, you know, you're an Irish bastard and all. And they would mm. always like... The usual one. That yeah, but it yep. was raw as well, especially Come in on. Manchester. And like where I went to school as well, it was like, um, it was known as the Bronx or the UK at the time. Moss side was like gang central, Aww. you know. So it was all, a lot of like rawness there. And, mm. and then all the white lads anyway, they, they despised me. So then I was saying, hold on, hold on. No, I am British. Aww. I'm British. Yeah. And they were saying... No, no you're, you're not. not. We can hear your accent. We know your voice. We see your dad's tattoos and all they've heard. And like even the people on our street and all, they all heard about my dad's. So I was trying to, but the, the, they could never get it. They never understood. Mm. As much as I explained, they said you're Irish, and your dad's IRA, and that's you the just end of it. Take your answer for it. Yep. So then, so what happened then? I grew up then. I hang up out with like loads of young lads and all. <coughs> they they were all like about five six years older than me, yeah. and um, I got expelled from school then and started rapping and shit. And then my mate showed me um, this like this video called Shadows, and he said it's about the Freemasons and all, and secret oh. societies and all, right? And he goes, did you know that they run the world? The devil and all runs the world and all through the media yeah. and everything. And I was like, it's bullshit. I would have known about As this. you do, because that's what society makes you believe yeah. at that point. Like, don't don't get caught up in all that. Don't, never, don't worry about that. Don't think about that. It's not real, but... Yeah. You, no, me, I so I said to my dad, Dad, have you ever heard of the Freemasons? And he said, yeah, it's real and all, you know? And they tried to... He, they tried to initiate your grand into it, no, but he said no, and I was like, what? No, so that was me. I became like, I started studying at them from 12 years old. Mm-hmm. Went into school, seen my, my teacher wearing a Freemason ring and all, and I said, you're part of that secret society, you know? I'm against secret societies, anything. Mm-hmm. I'm, about, I'm about being open. You have me, and like, let's be real then, like oh, you what? said. I'm an open book. Like you said, even about talking about your family and all, and that's oh, the what? most intimate shit. So oh, if what? you're willing to talk about the, your family oh, yeah. and everything, be talking about, you know, talking about you anything. You know you as well as I know, mate, to do that, to stand on your own on ten toes for what you exactly. believe in when the rest yeah. of the crowd's over there are on it's easier. That's why people live in negativity because exactly. it's easier, easier to navigate through. Positivity is yes. unpredictable. It's change, and that means starting on your own and not being afraid to say, "I'm not running with a crowd because this is what I believe and yeah. I don't align with." And that's what society teaches you growing yeah. up. Never mind all that. Just run with a crowd. Just you know what I mean. Yeah. Be a sheep. Just don't don't be don't be thinking you know best and don't be trying to get off Course. track and don't because you're yeah. scared. Yeah, or the fear. You, you well, know. that was it, bro. But for me, I just thought then. Fuck society! I uh, was like, yeah. I was a rebel you then. From that? from the minute I was, the minute I when I was twelve, thirteen, and I found out that there was people, the same people are controlling the prison systems and the school systems mm-hmm. and the court systems and the media and the, and everything to do with it. And they're all this fucking. I I went mad, bro. Yeah, so even I mean, like a school curriculum. Like you think about the school curriculum, like like. You're, yes, you're taught in oh, and English and all that, and I get it's probably never going to change, but like when it comes to actual real life, yeah, it's you're bullshit. also made the believe growing up in school. You don't get your GCSEs and your A-levels, you're fucked. Yeah, school is a brainwash you're camp. never Yeah, of course, it's a brainwash camp. You're a feeder. And kids then, you, you get sucked in that thought, and then yeah. you, yeah, you genuinely course. believe, so I'm going to be a failure anyway, you know what I mean? Like, then they get, it's like, no, it's not, we're not saying, like, when you have a man like us, we're not saying, yo, it has to be fuck school and all that, but it might not be for you, and that's all right. Yeah. There's an alternative path. That's don't. That doesn't mean that life's never going to go anywhere for you, and you'll never get what you want, because... You, you didn't do well in school and things like that. It's, it's, you know what I mean? You should be taught about banking. You should be taught about... The thing I don't teach you is get a job. What about if you can't get a job, you have to go on the brew? Yeah. yeah. I never knew what the brew was until my dad was like, yo, do you want to do something yeah. here, son? We need keep a roof but over again, our head. Like, everything's about get a job. With them. Uh-huh. You know, it's like they're breeding... Um, you know, it was like a... Uh, it's a uh, slave mentality, you know. Mm. They don't. There's no business classes in school, so don't teach you even about taxation. They don't take you about bank accounts, nothing yeah, like course. that. Like how yeah, to, yeah, of course they teach you all mad shit. You're walking day. out blinded, and then yeah. if you're going, if you're if you're going to make the jump to go, like sick for up or sick, whatever it is, and all that, like you're. Yes, you can. You, you, like I studied politics, travel tourism, and history or something. Well, army had put my fucking head away. Of course. But the thing I didn't like about politics was you had to be neutral. Like, what if I don't feel that? Mm-hmm. No. Neutral point of view. Yes. Everything else isn't going to work. But I don't believe it. doesn't sit right with me. Yes. I'm not going to be happy in myself just aligning with a statement that I don't fucking like. I don't yes. live it. Of course. So it's yeah. then at that point, I'm just, I'm getting fed up with school again. I'm just like, yeah, yeah fuck school. Yeah, I'll I learn on my own. I always myself. thought that, bro, it's funny because it's a similar thing. I've always thought, I thought, so these colleges and all them, when I started to go to college, and I was thinking, it's all about like a, a tolerance, basically. We'll accept everything, but you, uh, 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 unless you don't accept something. You with <laughs> oh, me? Boy. And that's literally yes. it. You with me? So yes. you're we're tolerant to everything yes. apart from intolerance. 
which is actually a form of like fascism. And oh. you're thinking, what the fuck are you talking about? And then? You're, like, oh, and surely, then... like, I don't have to agree with everything of everything. What are you talking about? And then it's funny because, like, see, growing up in Manchester, bro, this is what I was trying to get at as well. Like, so I, I had no no um, faith in the system from a young child and I thought I've been lied to everything's a lie it's a trick mm -hmm. and, and I thought and I hung about with just militant guys and I, bro some of them were from Muslim backgrounds some of them were Jamaican some of them you know and we were all like none of the, well, none of us give a fuck about exactly. where, where we're from or not and what we realised was is they're, they're elites that are running the earth and they're, oh, wow. they're, they're against poor people and it's about keeping poor mm -hmm. people divided and split up and corrupted yeah, you with me and this is what money for wars but so this was funny. So then I thought to myself, bro, and then I started studying, like, this is true. See, in England, mm -hmm. no one, none of the kids would call themselves British, were who I grew up with. None of them would say they are British. They're all English. Or they would say, I'm, I'm English, but my dad was Jamaican or Scottish or wherever. But they would never claim British. You with me? So me saying I was British, it was a mad concept. You have to remember mm -hmm. this because everyone's saying, you're Irish, you're Irish, you're Irish. So I had like a proper nationality complex because mm -hmm my whole life everyone's saying to me you're British oh, you. I and I came from Rathcool you're with me bro so mm -hmm. when I moved to there I was thinking I'm British and next thing now nah, you're Irish to the death then when I start studying and I start studying about colonialism and everything mm -hmm. and I'm thinking I don't believe in, like this is the truth see all my mates know when I was studying about the Freemasons and everything else like the royal family like I, I don't agree with the royal family at all. You with me? Like I can't I can't agree with them. Like what I was always going to ask. Yeah, like do you support like um, King Charles? What would you say about yeah, that? I don't really like. Do you know? Like see, because of my music and the whole PROD thing, I get looked at as like yeah, the course. biggest pro ever. It is. Yes. But yes, I am. I am, and I'm proud of it, and I'll always be. And that's what it's part of. It's been from the start. Putting the flag on my back and having our people have a parade in themselves. Yeah. Because we've always been looked at as the tramps and the underdogs and the scumbags. So if you're going to label us as that, we're like, well, that's all right, sweet. We'll take yeah. that then. We're everything, all the or shake you give us, yeah. and we'll go and get the fucking world. And you'll do nothing about it when we get it then. Because yeah. we're the free thinkers. It's going to change shit. We're going to have kids that come up behind us. So I don't really, I don't really get involved in like politics and all. Mate, I use now the make as the make's my mate. Yes. So the make is not yeah. enough. Off, so I knew that. I knew that as well. So like the prod thing is more like just the culture because you're from the Shanko. Oh, that's where that's... It Oh, I mean that's so that that is where it originated from. You know what it's like with rap mate. Everybody's got their own wee gangs and you pack hard thug life. And so you're looking at that and you're you're like, well, where's like where's my wee gang? Like where's yeah, all of me? Where's course. the mates? Where's the bros? Yes. Like, and so it became yes, that's where it derived from. That was the origin. It was prod. So yeah. it was P R O D. And but then yeah. after a while, what I'm noticing is. Little by little, and one by one here and there, maybe getting a Catholic listening to my music. Of course. And then I'm starting to think, right, now you're doing this, now you're getting addicted to it, now you love it, Nick. now you know, right, this is what I want for my life, I want to rap, I want to be a rapper. Yeah. It's like, right, I want to be the best at it now. How do you get to be the best at it? You're going to have to be universal. Yeah. You can't just rap for prods all my yeah. life. Yeah, well, that's And what a, they yeah. don't realise is the teams, Protestant, Catholic, prod, they don't really care what way people want to slice it. What they don't realise is they think you're just solely focused on them. There's a whole world out here. Yes. And it's at the point now where, like, I'm blessed to be able to say, from people laughing and they'll be playing the music, get into 2023, we've done 20 million streams on all platforms. Yeah. Spotify, Apple, the whole lot. So it's now the, the supporter base is universal. So yeah. I'm now obligated to talk to so many different cultures and so yes. many different walks of life who are listening to me and relying on me. And one yeah. thing I've always said from day one is, grew up in the Shankill State, whole life, proud of it but I didn't want that life not to knock nobody but I didn't want that I didn't, didn't want to be UDA UVF and all that. I, I wanted to start my own thing Yes. and I wanted it to be positive but to like my belief as well Yeah. I wanted to be able to how would I run something like that if I had it so I when it started to become a conscious thought like break the letters there and yeah. make the letters stand for something what does it stand for then? passion persistence respect resilience the opportunity to overcome dedication determination you'll get the fucking job done <laughs> and to me I don't care why you're white black gay straight pro take don't care where you are where you're from in this world or who you are if you apply them qualities to your life and that's what I tell the kids you'll be successful in what you want to do because it's just it's law of attraction it's universal it's, there I is no that. real secret sauce in it 
Yeah, it's you know true. I mean? you know, so that's fa- where it came you from. You said your favourite rapper was Eminem. Eminem my- and then Pac and then DMX. Yeah, and- so Tupac was my favourite rapper, but you know the way he had Thug Life tattooed yep. in his belly. Do you know what he said Thug Life stood for? The hate you give little infants fucks everybody. Too militant, bro. That's too G'd up, though. Hate and that you is give raw. little infants fucks everybody. And that's, and that's the true. real truth, Because you're passing it down, and that's when I knew, going off somebody like Pac, boy was Milton, but he was years ahead of his time. Yeah. And you're looking at him like 25, but you also see the flaws because he's running about a casino at 25, booting the fuck out of people because yeah. he's just human too. Yeah. But he was know. so beyond his time and it was, how do we get the next set of kids coming up? And when I started thinking like that and with that type of mindset years ago, people think I just come up with a few words and just, but no, it was a real conscious thought and I, it was a movement that I created. So it was like, if I can get somebody, one person, yeah. Well, the only one I need from start is me. If I can find somebody else, that one extra person who is willing to believe in what I'm saying and believe in PROD, the movement, yeah. then we can really, like, we can do something here. We can really show these kids of ours. And that's who it was about first. It was about the kids in Mass State or the kids on the road or before anywhere else. Yeah. It was about showing them as more than anybody. You can have the world too. Yeah, I love that shit, bro. So yeah. what do you call it? Um, nah, it's militant. See, it's funny because, like, so, so my song, We Johnny, you know, We, we Johnny. Johnny. So you fucking mad. A lot of people didn't even... Some, I've read, some of the um, I was reviews... watching you talk about, so I was watching you talk about the accent change on it. How exactly. you consciously done that. Of course. So it's funny because a lot of people, some people even writing reviews said, oh, there's two people, John Sue's a rap group because there's two <laughs> rappers there. There's a Northern Irish Shall one. There's, like, a, there's like another rapper. So what happened was... Like I said, living in Manchester, studying about colonialism, and mm-hmm. I'm against this, I'm against that then, and they're all part of the Illuminati. Yep. Even like um, King Billy and all, I remember reading about him being mm-hmm. part of the Illuminati and all. And this is me reading all this as a kid, mm-hmm. and I'm there with like all multicultural guys, you know what I mean, who don't give a shit about any of that. We're oh. just like, looking for the truth. So when I'm writing that then, then I'm looking into like the Irish struggles, you with me, and all that, and I'm thinking, wow. So that I wrote a rap, a militant rap, like quite like you know it was like quite nationalist you with me mm-hmm. and I released it then next thing I got loads of death threats uh, and they're saying we're coming for you and all. That's so that's why I wrote all. that's why I wrote Wee Johnny that's why so, I wanted uh, did they actually touch on me whatever you want did they actually ask you like at f- first probably like a two part question first part have you ever held on to any resentment towards like your dad or your ma because you had to move about a lot as a kid? None at all. So see, my dad, I always looked up my dad like my dad was like um, my ultimate hero. Mm-hmm. You with me, bro? Because mm-hmm. um, yeah. like one, he became um, he was when he was uh, when he was involved when he was in the UVF and all. He always just thought it was right. He thought what he was well, doing was for God and Ulster as well, and yeah. the cause. Then when he became a Christian, he felt conflicted and he thought, this isn't God's way and I'm going to dedicate my life to God. But that has always been an honourable man and he's mm-hmm. always searched for truth, you know, and God's guidance. Like So like when he got out there and like, even like years when I was a wee kid, he got offered as, uh, to pastor, uh, be a youth pastor of a thousand people in America and in, uh, in California. And I was only like four, and I was like, Dad, are we moving to California? My dad says, I'm going to pray on it. And he said, God's told me I'm going to Wales uh, instead. Him in yeah, that and he didn't do it, bro. He didn't do it. He's always just said, like, for God. So he moved us to Wales, and I, I loved him for it. And then when he moved us to Manchester, too, it's like, he, he showed us he showed us the world, you know? That's and, it, like, and it was funny, because me and Adam kept our wee accents and all. And, like, and then when we were out in Manchester, we were trying to talk a bit more like them. So our accents have become mm. like... Which I suppose people don't see. Like, people, yeah. you know what I mean? I'm sure you've had people in the past listening to music, but, like, so you're supposed to be from Belfast. Why are you talking with you? But I suppose, like, you are living there. And, it's, like, did you ever come into that type of thing where, like, if you're not sort of talking with Emmons and playing in, you're maybe getting bullied at, at any point. Exactly, bro. And not so only that, and it's more and it's more people going, like, like, and it's more people going, what are you saying? What? <laughs> and like, and laughing as well. Like even one of the word ones, bro. I remember one of the ones that used to annoy me. The word book. So we say book. Huh. Give us that book, huh. right? And then in Manchester they say book. So if oh. I'm like, if I'm talking like Emmons, I go, yeah, where's that book, bro? And then I'd go, yeah, bro, passes that book. And everyone goes, yeah, book. You with me? And like, even shit like that, bro. And I look, it's stuck in my head because I can remember them all laughing at me when I was like 12 for saying book instead of like book. You know, and me and like that's... thinking, fuck, you with me? So I had to try and change my, my oh, colloquialism. You, know? you, know, like, you always wonder, like, when you see people move away from home yeah. and then you see them sort of, I always wonder, like, 
are is it is it an accent that you're putting on or does it does it just sort of change or yeah, does it change. so even like see even with my girlfriend my girlfriend comes from Carrick here and she laughs at me all the time because it just sort of sometimes I talk to her in a Manchester accent too uh, then sometimes like but my wee daughter she's from Manchester and I talk to her in the so Belfast she born in Manchester yeah she was, uh, she's 100% English but like I mean she's half she tells her she's half Irish and all you sorry, know but, but I mean but she, like I talk to her with my Belfast accent and then I talk mm. to my brother and that and like some mates and I don't it's like it's definitely um it sort of ties in with I was I was watching the episode one earlier on I was watching you talk about how like at times you didn't feel like you had a home like yeah you know, I've never was, really had just a, sort yeah. of I was on I was I was watching a clip on Shane Todd too and he was asking you were talk, touching on as well like and I I sort of like I had a real genuine respect for that because to be able to admit that, mate, that's honest vulnerability. Like, yeah, but to be able to say in a world where you don't mean home, where the heart is, but to be able to be like, I didn't really feel like I ever had a home. That's yeah. that's honest vulnerability. Well, that's sort of what the album's all about too. You see, and it was talking about like, you know, it's like I came sort of the full circle too of accepting even like being Irish. You yeah. with me? Because it was like. My great granda was from down south. He was a Republican. Right. And then he met my great granny, who was a Protestant. Then she became pregnant. Right. But then, then it all, like, he had to leave. Oh, so yeah. he left then. And then when my granda was born then, um, my great granny married a, a Protestant fella who mm -hmm. didn't accept my granda. Uh, and he said, you know, like, he was like the time. son of a Fenian, you know, mm -hmm. and he would say, you're a bastard and all. Mm -hmm. So then my granda grew up, like, tortured. And then when he was 16, my granda joined the British Army. Mm. So he's the son of a Republican then who joined the British Crazy. Army to escape his evil Protestant dad. Then his son, my dad, became a member of the UVF. Then when we moved to Manchester in 96, everyone started calling us Irish bastards and IRA. Yeah. So it was like a full circle. It's mad with me, isn't it? When you go actually deep into your history, like there is such a deep-rooted hatred here on both sides. But when you go into your history, you can guarantee everybody connected. Yeah, fully, You are connected to somebody on the other side. And whether yeah. you like it or not, they may live 50 yards or side of a wall and have a different name, but they're just really like you. You're just yeah. trying to live life and we're trying to deal with the shit's going on uh, and we're trying to feed our family. Did you ever hear my song, The Bridge? That's on the... The Belfast Baby Mixtape. But no, it was... The, it. No. Yeah, it goes, I'm in a sampled... Um, what was the film? Mickey Bow and Me. Yes, yes, yes. And I said, um, the bridge is the dividing line between us and them. And then I do a rap about saying, when I crossed over the bridge, I realised it's the exact same. The only difference was is the colours and the pavements and the, the names of the gangs, Mate, you know what I'm saying? To be honest, I, at times, like, because of how I started off, I never thought I would see it. But, like, on SoundCloud alone, for example, see over, like, something like 11.5 million players, 1.5 of them is accumulated in Dublin. Yeah, she's sure. And 800,000 <laughs> is accumulated in Belfast. Yep. So at this point, what am I supposed to do? Exactly. I met a wee five year old, right? Five year old mate from Art Glass. <laughs> Didn't even know where the fuck Art Glass was. So the phone me, right? Said the earlier, oh, I'd be late to my own funeral. So the big sis in the estate, she phoned me. She was like, yo, Spans, I got around here. We child wants to meet you. It's like, right, all right. So he's patiently waiting in the kitchen and he's just like bouncing and he buzzing, like, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? So I'm on my way around. This kid fucking sprinted. Sprinted from the house, right, bounced into my arms and all. And I said, to him, I have Rangers, so welcome to the party. And I said to him, <laughs> What's your favourite song, kid? And he was like, 5405, welcome to the party. And I was like, How am I, how am I going to tell that child of five years? How am I going to tell anybody, first of all? But how can I ever tell that child of five years of age, You're not like me, son, you're not from where I'm from, so I don't want your support? Yeah, and, what uh, type of weirdo shit's that? No, of that course. weak kid doesn't give a fuck about colours, yeah. religion, none of it. Yeah. All he knows is, I love young Spencer's music. Yeah, and and he makes me believe in yeah. me. And he's five years of age, but he's clicked in enough yeah. to know that. So when I know that's why I'm, uh, I'm just like, if you're good to me, I'm good to you. <laughs> and if it's fuck me, it's fuck you. And it's Cross good. the board, easy as it is. And do you feel like then you've learnt a lot then doing the music and everyone loving you and all, and even having we oh, I mean, Catholic kids and everything loving Yes, mate, because more than anything, it's, it's taught... It's, Young Spencer has taught me more about Gareth, to be honest with you. Yes. I've, do you know what I mean? Like, young, like, the, you'll know what I mean. Like, they're, they're forever in tw and, like, intertwined with the both of them. It's like, yeah. without one, you can't have the other. It's just knowing when to find that balance. Like, I always say, life is balance. That's why life spelled backwards is evil. Yeah, yeah. Life is balance, and it's balancing now more than anything. When I need to shut the world out and be Gareth, and when I need to have the light on and talk to the world and be young Spencer. 
yeah. and it is a struggle at times. You'll know yourself, mate, and you do. You get caught up in it, and you, you for a while it's natural. You get caught up in now. What are you at? And what's happening? And it's girls and it's parties and whatever. And everywhere you go, they're playing it because you're coming from constantly like I'm not turning that shit on. I used to go to Cuckoo up in Mike's, mate, like 2019, maybe something like that. Fella, I know we um we only bail. He's a singer, cracking singer, and I was going to go busking, mate. I'm at a point now where making the music consistently for years, but I'm like, right, you need to get out in front of people. Of course. It's time to fully live it. My first thought is busking, shape myself. He was like, mate, why don't you go to the open mics? I was like, what's that? He was like, go to the open mic night. I go to Cuckoo every Wednesday night, just get up in front of a crowd. And he's sort of walking me through it. So I'm working up a courage and I'm like, shit, what are you performing? I had a song at that time, it was called Don't Fuck With Me. Yeah. And it was coming from frustration, it was like, stop. Yeah, yeah. And it was another song called Why Hate, and it was like, why you hate? Like, stop fucking me, just, I'm trying. Yeah. Fucking trying something. So I goes with him, goes to the open mic, and they left me right till the end. Fella Alan, he was running, left me like 10 to 1, mate. And I'm shaking myself, stomachs and nuts, hadn't had nothing to eat. Don't even want to drink or nothing. And so he was like, mate, I'm going to the toilet, I'll be back in a minute. The fellow was like, Spencer, wee minute, I ain't getting you on, I'm just sorting out the amp now. I was like, oh, I know sweat. I looked across at the door. I was like, I could just run down the Lisbon Road and go home here, like, and just sack it off and uh, be like, oh, I, I mate, look, listen, I got sick or something. And then I just, I did, I literally said to myself out loud, I was like, you walk out that door now, I guess that's it, dream's over. Yeah. Don't, don't be walking out that door and then going home and be like, I'll, I'll, I'll get at the rabbit next week or something. No. Cool. Get on that stage, pour your heart and your soul out, and... You know, it's like bundle of nerves, you're shaking from head to toe, but right there and then you're addicted. Of course. And you're like, yo, how do I? So yeah. it, it went from people yeah. would know me, I'd just become known as like go laveries or here, there, and everywhere, and just become known as Spencer the rapper. And he might, you Jeez, know what I mean? He might get on the mic and he might, when I got comfortable then, yes. long time I would go, mate, I just performed the one song straight off the stage. Yes. No talking. Then it gets to the point, you know what it's like, where there's somebody in the crowd laughing. Yeah. There's somebody in the crowd like, trying to give you stick or like and it, it, it hurts you like it you know what I mean at, at first at that you try and prepare and you're like oh, I'll, I'll deal with it you know what I mean I'm, I'm, I'll not give him no time I'm more mature than that but it fucking cuts it hurts when standing in the crowd and we became known as like I sort of give us the name like a cuckoo collective and it was all ones who were just going and we were just passionate about music man. Jeez. having them jamming sessions and I got to a point where I was like the more confidence I have in myself do you know what? Nah, I'm not going to stand and let you just laugh at us and fuck that. Nah, yeah. I'm going to stick up for us. And at times it was getting to the point where I was like, yo, don't, don't fucking dare disrespect us. Like, we're up here sharing our story yeah. in the hopes that one person might hear it yeah. and, and smile or, or have that wee laugh at the need or just feel appreciated or nah, just feel no. like, yo, thank you, fat. So it, it went from there. Just I would go every week, give CDs out number of CDs. We actually done a show, the first Young Spencer Experience show before December. And I was at the taxi depot getting two girls from Port Down home who were at the show. This fella comes up to me. He's talking away to my dad first. My dad says, hey, fella says he knows you. I was like, I don't know. He was like, mate, I have your CD, your Yours Forever CD from Cuckoo. <laughs> he was able to tell me what number and all. He was yeah. like, number 12, mate. You wrote yeah. a handwritten letter and all yeah, that. So. And that, again, was like a reminder. Like, yeah. yo, like, fuck. Like, you, you see the moments where you're like, look, how far we've came. Like, yeah, I know. I'm doing this. I sort of... Learn to live by it takes 10 years to be an overnight success. Oh, bro. Really, you have to put your Trying to laugh and... about Central C, you know, Central C said, uh, I won, um, he won, did he win? Um, when the they come out, I do like Sense now. I do love Central C, bro. But he made me laugh, he goes, oh, um, Abby Yeah, yeah, but he, I love it when he goes, um, uh, I won Newcomer of the Year. He goes, I'm not really a newcomer, but I'll take it anyway. Oh, why? Because I've been at this for 10 years, bro, grafting it's at that it. Green, you know? Know, it's that green, it's like that picture you always see floating about. It's like, you know what I mean? You'll see, like, the ship or whatever, but you don't see what's below it. Yeah. You don't see all the fucking icebergs you run into below it. And, oh, but I do feel without that, you're not making it. That is what shapes you. Like, that's yeah, what's true. That's getting out in front of people is like the last step. And now, that's what I would say to anybody, you must find you in what you're doing. You have to authentically be you because we are harsh where we're from. But the one thing is, for the most part, we're an honest people. Yeah. And you'll be cut to the fucking bone. Oh, wow. And we'll tell you what you ain't got. It's shake. We'll tell you what's shake. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to take all them that shit, that shit, that shit until you blow somebody's mind and it's, it gets to a point where it's like you don't want to listen you want to escape it that's fair enough it might not be for you but for everybody else I'm going to get to a point where you cannot escape it 
Yeah. Every fucking party, your ma's, dogs, granny's kennel's going to have young Spencer in it. And that's well, the way that's it had the to fact become. that it happened to me, bro. I've been here a year now, and fuck's sake, I've met a load of kids. I heard loads of kids there, and they were like, oh, we know him and all these. Um, he does a song, and all one kid goes, I know what it is, straight out of Belfast. Straight out of Belfast. Like, like, you know, so the yard, But even like, that there, mate, that's like, that's, I watched you talk earlier on, and you'd said that you wrote a militant song um, once you did. Yeah. That's when you were met with resentment, maybe yeah. a lot more resentment of course. Even, and the threats and stuff yeah. like that. And, and that's where We Johnny came from then. That's where I wrote that song from, you yeah. know, and then from We Johnny. And then it's funny, when I wrote We Johnny too, like you said, I sort of thought, oh, maybe I shouldn't rap you do this it, the first thought, it's like... Oh. But then when I did, when I had the courage to rap it, it ended up, um, it got put on a... And Baby J's album, Seems and it was like the that. biggest rap ever then at the time. So I was thinking, shit, and loads of people were writing about it. And then that's when I thought, right, I have to tell the whole story. You know and what I mean? And mate, then I told I, the I troubles. Had this, genuinely, right? I had this thought because um, I knew we were coming on this, so I was like locking in a wee bit more. And I, I had this thought, right? I, I'm at a point now where I'm getting more comfortable than ever because I've yeah. been doing it that long. For me, before anybody has their opinion, I know I'm fucking good at this now. Yeah. I've proved that to myself. So in knowing that, that I know moving forward, it's just I'm laughing and people will be like, you're a shake, whatever, I'm all this here. And when I'm thinking about like the criticism that I'm being met with, yeah. and I'm thinking, well, if this is what I'm being met with now, what the fuck's he been met with? For yeah. the he was rapping out yeah. here before, even saying certain words yeah, in yeah. songs that you would be told. Yeah. And my dad always said to me, it's on the PROD, thing's not going to work. Mm hmm you will never get people to believe in that because we're so divided. Yeah. And he was like, and another one, and usually my dad's right, like he's mm -hmm. a good judge of character. And mm -hmm. the second point was, I'll tell you something else. See if you want to bring people together and all, love you to bits, but you don't you don't have it in you, nobody does. No, mm -hmm. That's the one thing we can't, you'll never have a Catholic say, P-R-O-D. Yeah. So right away then, because I'm stubborn, get it from my mum and dad, I'm just yeah. like, I'm not having that. That's not well, happening because if I make it clear what it's about, yeah. anybody can feel a part of it then. And so then it becomes that. I love you the best, but see if you well, don't believe... Well, I read believe. some of your comments. I seen one of the comments that said, this young lad has done more to unite people than... <laughs> you see some you know, bastards. I've seen some like on Twitter, some of like done more to like, yeah. unite than like a peace process. Yes, you do, you just be sitting that. laughing you know, at I know, but like, I thought fair play to you. And it's, listen, you have to give your props, bro. But, uh, you, you like you well. saying, mate, you have to... That's what I would say to anybody. Like You, you have to authentically be you doing it because right away, if I'm going to put it like this, if I'm a Catholic and I'm listening to Young Spencer and I think there's anything fake about it, I'm going to be like, fuck you, that's fake. Yeah. I'm not believing that at all. And that's knowing that process, that's why the first idea was straight out of shackle. Because that's home turf, that's where I'm from. Yeah. But then you think, right, Gareth, come on, you're smarter than that. Like, make it universal, yeah. make it more pliable. What is the one thing that ties us together? Belfast. Yes, straight and out of Belfast. Be you. Doing it and let it be raw yeah. and let it just hit cons up ahead and crack heads. And you do mention about uh, in that straight out of Belfast, it's got the green, white, and gold in it uh, too, doesn't it? And you say like. Wood VLO, Park yes. DCB, yes. Screaming Skulls and ESRD, yes. Constant OS, Paul Glass, and Twin Brook, Constant Devils, we're spinning away. <laughs> there ain't no cons can do what we do. I've got these cons all under one roof. You ain't no cap, you ain't no rat. Well, you're all good, smell and you're all good. <laughs> but nah, it's, it's, but what it really is, is before people get caught up in the whole. Like, I work in a school, and for a long time, mate, you were like, it was, uh, you know what I mean? It was, how is he working in a school? I hear it. I'm, I'm yeah. in the community all the time. My ears are massive, mate. I hear all the whispers. It's, of course. Why, hi, 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 they like, hi, that's not of a course. hi, hi, hi. My yeah. life outside what I do for my job is my life the same Obviously, way it is to bro. you. And I know now, consciously, people's listening and have a voice now. So, if I can bring people together, that's who I was raised to be yeah. before all this young spat. Just yeah. be good to people and just have a good heart. And if you can't bring people together, Course. and when I know you are tuning in and you want it just as much, and you may be looking at me like, oh, he's from your side of the wall, but here he makes us feel like we can. Yeah. Let's, let's call it what it is. And that's yeah. why moving forward, like, do you know what yeah. I like about it, bro, right? Because you've got, like, kneecap and all, you know, and kneecap are representing, like, you know, and they love saying we're the Finians and all, you oh, know? Right. And then, like, you first... So, me, you have to remember this. I done my born in Belfast, turned my wee Johnny, turned the Troubles and all. I grew up in Manchester. Mm. I moved away to Manchester, bro. Yeah. You with me? I grew up with all them guys. Um, so I'm not a Protestant. You with me? I'm not a Catholic. I'm not nothing like that. You with me? So, mm -hmm. But a lot of people think I am. 
Oh, so a lot of people even like, from, and yeah. like they sort of wanted like a Protestant. They had to be like a Protestant rapper. Like you know, man, there is uh, one man. You've embraced the culture. You've smashed uh, it, and it's the P R O D. Like, and you've done it well. Like yeah, and thank the good, you, mate. Thank you, genuinely. Have, thank you. Mate. And like you said, you know, there's no bitterness. There's no. no there's not. And if anything, it's the opposite. Oh. And I even heard you the way you talk. Like my wee, um, my wee cousin Jemre. She's like a Turkish girl. She's only lived in Belfast for like two years. She. Loves you, bro. You're our uh, favourite rapper. Ah, I mean, see, you when know? you see some days, you get, you know, it's like you tag them videos, and it'll be Marmus in Turkey, or it'll be, it yeah. could be Barcelona, it could be Amsterdam, and it's these mad places, and at some times it's like Ukraine and all, and you're like, what the fuck's these guys in the youngs, man? Like, do they even understand what I'm saying? At times, of like, course. I tell my dad, he's just straight to the point. He'd be like, what? What do you want to hear about yeah. rods and all that for? He wouldn't understand it. Yeah. We actually had a. We actually met with a couple of Swedish fellas recently, and we're talking about like filming a bit of bit of a documentary and stuff. And he was like, like right away, a fellow called Lars, like he, he knew what the crack was. Yeah. Like, he, like son of us, there moves in Sweden, like it yes. really does numbers. And that yeah. again, that was just you're tan in the moments, but you're 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 speaking to your own people, and you're also letting them know, yes, I am speaking for you, but before that, I am speaking to me for me because this is yeah. therapy. Yeah. That's what you all forget, it's therapy, and that's what they don't understand about what we do. This is therapy, and that's why we don't want to talk about certain things, and that's why we talk about certain things. And when we know we can affect change more than maybe somebody on top of the hill, well, then that's what we have in common, because you don't like gamins the way I don't, because they don't fucking represent us. Yes, of And course. that's why then we'll be met with yeah. criticism, because yeah. it becomes, oh, you've got a whole load of people coming behind you now. Yeah. And if you've got both sides coming in and you're creating free thinkers, that's then you obviously you know you're going to be mad. It's like you said to me earlier about what's a Belfast Dublin connection. Belfast Dublin connection is flipping the country upside down and running around the world with a flag on my back. Yeah. And if you're from the RSA, throw your fucking flag up yeah. too. Yeah. Of course. You know what I mean? And we'll have a wee smoke yeah. and we'll have a wee drink. And if there's a couple of wee sexies on your side, bring them to my side. Well, yeah. You know what I mean? Of course. Fuck, and that's, you know what I mean? Let's do it. But let's, yeah. let's show that example to the kids coming up next. Like, aside from all that, you're seeing. Kids live their dream and doing something that's never been done before. Mm -hmm. And what no, we're doing, yeah. you, you're creating a history where you're mapping out a blueprint. Mm -hmm. Mate, whether this is what I had to re learn to realize, even with myself, even when it comes to somebody like you, mate, you're doing it that long, you can love you or hate you or whatever you want, but you can't deny it. Yeah. You've been out here doing this a long fucking time. Yeah. And to be doing it, a year, six months, to be rapping 12 hours straight, it's a fucking nightmare, to be honest with you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You need a cup of tea and I'm tired. And I, do you know what I mean? I'm doing my dad's head in and I'm, I'm starving. And, and, yeah. and that's what they don't see, the two, three days, no sleep. Of course. No eating. Sometimes, you know what I mean? You're maybe not at your job because, yo, this is work. Yeah. You need to get this done. Yeah. Like a, you have mental deadlines to meet. Yeah, of you course. You only this song out on this date. Why? What's it going to matter? Because it matters to me. Yes, of course. It's significant. And, yeah, and if you're, you have to treat it like a job, you know what yeah. I mean? I said that to a lot of my mates, you know, don't be getting complacent even. They got a deal and they thought they had made it. And I said, no, you should be out there busking every single day. Then you're getting paid. So don't just sit Go relax. harder to get it. It's yes. like a relationship, yes. mate. You do yeah. all the effort to get, yeah. that, to get the girl or get whatever yeah. it is. And then when you get them, it's like, I've and got the, you, you know what, bro? And this is the God's honest truth. With me, bro, I'd never fucking chased anything. I was yeah. a mad. Man, like, bro, I'd never chase nothing. Charlie Sloth and all, they all just came to me. You with me? Fancy. He came over and then he said, Will you do it? Fancy. And I was just like, Yeah, yeah. Same with Danny. I stopped rapping, went back to, I went to Spain. Oh, because, see, when I'd done the album, bro, it took me seven years to make the troubles and I needed the, I needed that story out. I needed it, you know, and mm -hmm. after, I really, after I finished it, didn't even care if I sold one fucking copy, bro. I just felt you like just, relieved. Well, oh, it was for you. Yeah. It was to get that off yes. your shoulder. And then Would when you I, say that that is your best album? The album you're most proud of? Well, or it's, what, my, what? it's my only album. You know, I've done loads of projects. I've done like, well, it's not my only album. You're right. I wrote, my, I made my first album when I was 16 called Politically Poetical Volume 1 and then Volume 2 and all when I was 17. That's them mixtapes, them underground mixtapes yeah, coming up. The exactly. Shape. They're all mixtapes and like, you know, I would m might have even made Pardon the me. beats, but they were on Hip Hop EJ and all like, just mad shit. You're with me, just trying to experiment. Yeah. But that there is like my only professional Conceptual like, album yes, that came yes. from one thought and blossomed yeah. into yeah, of course. And um, like, and the Belfast Baby is literally, you know, the Belfast Baby mixtape. That's literally the rejects from the Troubles album. I wrote, and there's twenty songs on that. Uh, that was I released that. I released on. that um, Belfast Baby mixtape like four years before the Troubles because it was like all them tracks mm. I was trying to make the Troubles but it was like that's my yeah. family story so I had to like get rid of all them other ones that weren't yeah. part of the story you and know? Do you, would you and your family 
if you don't mind answering it, like, would you and your family be tight knit now? Like, would you yeah, hundred percent. Let me tell you this, bro. See, um, when you said about my dad, my dad said as well one of the most, um, like greatest moments in his whole life. When I released the album, I hired out the Crumlin Road Jail, and that's where my dad was in jail. Uh, and I got my dad to host the, the album launch, uh, and my dad was in his old jail where he yeah, used to be a prisoner. Yeah. And then I got up, I got up then and wrapped, class, wrapped the story of my dad in the Fuck jail. Sake, yeah, and my dad class. said his head was blown a bit, he was a bit like this. That's a surreal full circle moment, yeah, and that's yeah, that. of course. I re the reason why I have a deep respect for that is because that's not what most people do, that's not taking what you had to deal with growing up weird uh, and using it against them and being yeah. like, nah, my life's shit. It's because you had us moving up. No, that's yeah. using that as your struggle and yeah, as your of story course. and embracing it. Yeah, and then of course we're living for it's literally written through my dad's eyes and I sample my dad talking in it and also like, my dad would ask me, sticks. my dad's dead proud of it. Like, my dad asked me to come, my dad's there doing, like, a, an event at a church and all, and he'd asked me to come and rap the song and all for Class, him, you know? Man. So Class. I've always, like like I said, my dad's sort of like a hero of mine, bro, mm. you know? And would there be a, like, would there be a song on that that sort of, Hold your heart like on that album, like with on the, one, on, one song. Yeah, on that. it's the, it's a cause worth living for, and it took me two years to write. And it's funny because it's it's um, my dad was a preacher then growing up, so yeah. I'd sit there and listen to my dad preach, and he cracks all the jokes and all. So I put all my dad's <laughs> jokes into there, like in the cause worth living for the song. It says like. Um, they beat me up and threw me into the river. That day I learned two lessons. Uh -huh. One, learn to swim. Two, don't play with Catholics, That's they're bad, bad news. news. But, yeah. but that was my dad's joke and they all laughed. The first lesson I learned was how to swim. You know, if you're getting That's... beat up and threw into the oh, river. Yeah. So I, like, I'd done all his jokes. And all, so... the, is that your dad talking? Yes, that's my dad That's talking. Even that thought, I made that yeah. awesome. And my dad said then, like, like I said, there's no stones unturned then. You know, my dad's my hero. I showed him what it was about. And it's funny because, you know, just because I don't believe in like you know loyalism or whatever like that, my dad genuinely believed in it, and that's yeah. what he was a warrior he for. It and he, he was ready to live and die for. And respectful. then when he became a Christian, he was ready to die on spot. On spot, he said, "I'm ready to die for this." And then, like all the the paramilitaries and all, they all respected it as well because they oh. said that you know what the, they all said, like you know if you're not a real Christian, we'll soon know. But my oh, dad well, was, and this is like forty years that's ago. That's why you know? I mean, when people when you talk about the whole like when people talk about God and stuff like that, like I believe in God, but I would consider myself more of a spiritual person. Yeah, I pray to God, I believe in God, but I yes. don't like that that idea of judgment. See exactly. That? Oh, yo. You're Christian. Oh, where exactly. Now? I, don't know. I don't like because you're judging me right away. Exactly. I don't, he knows what he know. If the way I look at it is, if, if nobody could ever make me have a relationship with my own man until I wanted to, you're not going to make me have a relationship with anybody unless yes. I want to. The way I look at it is, that's me and his or her, whatever. That's that's me and God's relationship. Yep. And that's G it's shit. Personal. Like that. yeah, it's personal. It's personal to us. The same way our relationship. Same way my relationship with my family. He knows when I'm not picking up a phone. Yes. He knows when I'm not talking back. He yeah. knows when I'm not. He knows me better than anybody. So yeah. I hate when people try and believe what you believe. Believe what's true to you. But stop getting involved in exactly. other people's. Never mind. What or it doesn't. It's not yeah. taking nothing away from That's you. That's funny you say because even I said this to OJ the other day. The word I'm um, Protestant. It literally means protestant against the Catholic Church. And that's why I said the OJ, I would never say I'm a Protestant because one, I would never want my religion to be defined as a protest of something else. <laughs> it's like me saying, if I yeah. fell out with OJ in the hot box and said, I'm going to set up my own studio, I'm going to call it not hot box. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You'd be like, just pick up your own name, like you're with me. Yeah, and that's the thing. Yeah. It's like, you know, forget what they're doing. If you're against that, you're against it, you know? That's but it's funny because, like you said, the Protestant thing in Northern Ireland is completely different than anywhere else. It's not From a religious thing. World, you know, right? It's not religious at all. It's to do with the culture, it's you sad. know. And that's but that's why too I feel like we get we get downheartened on both sides too because like we are so patriotic, like we are so passionate. Like yeah. we do at times look at the likes of England and be like we're more patriotic towards a flag yeah. than you are. Yeah, you just don't true. even want to say you're a fucking British. It's you just don't true. even want to claim it. You are trying to run away from it. Yeah. Like and it's the same with a Catholic side. Like they are loyal and they are faithful yeah. too what they believe in and that's the, the way I look at it is it's no skin off my back what you believe in it doesn't course. really fucking and really really matter to me see if you're not getting in my way you're not causing me no trouble sweet then get 100%. your money feed your family and here do you watch South Park 
I've seen it before with wee clips with me, but oh, I'm not really. Bro, I family guy says Barbie, they get away with See, all sorts of Yeah, it? I struggle with Family Guy because Family Guy is like um the the humor is like like the, a full episode. It's just all like non coherent humor. The jokes oh. can't don't like it. See South Park though, it's like a social commentary. But did you have you seen the latest episode of South Park? It's right. about Harry and Meghan. Right. Yeah, and, uh, uh, done some and they're things, called, like... yeah, and they're called uh, they're called he's the Prince of Canada. He's the <laughs> Prince of Canada, you know, and the Queen of Canada. And all. You're not saying it, I'm but saying obviously it's technically time, right. Yeah. Like she is the Queen of Canada, bro. You need to watch. That's I was crazy, laughing, bro. Well, and they went on a worldwide privacy tour. <laughs> you know, they're saying we want our privacy. They're walking around everywhere. You know, with placards saying give us privacy. I've, I've seen what, a few weeks. So what did you think of uh, What did you think of uh, uh, um, Harry and Meghan and all? What did you? think of them like what they're doing because obviously you're a family guy right? I don't really know what's about it my ma dropped me up to work like a couple of weeks ago she was talking about it she was saying about how like he's, he's doing this thing where he's speaking about the yeah. whole family and all again it ties into that like he looks at it like this is my truth and I want to show I did hear the thing that he said about how there was supposed to have been a statement made about hey, I'm paraphrasing like, but it was something like that he was the spur her Oh yeah, yeah. Well, and, that's what his that's what his oh, book's called. That's the what, oh, that's what he's. Yeah, well, his dad what, said that to him. Apparently, yeah. he goes. Uh, he said to Diana, "You've given me an error. Now you've given me a spur." But that you know? when he, when people people <laughs> look at that and people will be like, "Oh, you shouldn't be doing that," but because your truth includes other people's truth. But is it fair that yeah. he has to live with that feeling? But if yeah. he genuinely feels that to his heart, like I'm, I'm just a spur. Yeah, yeah. Is it fair that he has to live with that and can't ever speak about it? Yeah. No, but, no. Uh, I like Harry. I just I'm not I'm not sold on uh, Meghan Markle. Don't I don't like her. That's sorry, what South Park like done as well, bro. It was so funny. That he opens up Meghan at the end. She's just like some hollow robot. Did you ever see that uh, show? Uh, she's Belgian, in. You ever see bro. Suits on Netflix? Yeah, yeah, of course. Harvey Specter and all. So yeah, not early. Really. Yeah, but you know, I don't really. You know, I mean, I don't really be tan in my like. All that type of shit, sort of, just stay nah, away from of it. I don't really. The South Park episode made me laugh. There's two. There's two episodes. Out. Did you not watch the um the pandemic special as well about South Park? No. Oh, bro, it was too cheap up. And then um, Randy, Randy starts selling. That weed. the boy runs about with the weed. the thing with his big balls in it. He ends up yeah. with his balls. Ends yeah, up but he starts selling weed. We borrow about. Yeah, that's it. And he starts <laughs> selling weed during the pandemic, and you know? it was so funny, bro. But then they've only done two episodes this season, and the second one is about Harry and Meghan. And the first episode is about Kanye. Oh. You know, oh, the and rent, like, the older rent. Yeah. Yo, what do you think about Kanye West? I'm not gonna lie, bro. I like Kanye, and I like I do, I like the, f- the free thinking aspect. I like the fucking yo. I stand on it. I believe in it. I'm saying it. But then you can see how like they seem to be painting them out to be like yo. You're like weirdo. Like you're you're on to, and it's because he's mentioning names, and it's because he's yeah. speaking about things. Like he was running concerts. And he was charging all sorts for prices and he was getting on, ranting a whole load of shit for 20 minutes and then bouncing off a stage. Yeah. And he's all these mad stages and people's in these mosh yeah. pits and all and he's just leaving them standing there. So, but yes. I do like Kanye, yeah. like, I do like a lot of his music. But, I mean, it's like, I don't agree with everything everybody says. Yeah, well, I like, I I originally liked Kanye, I thought he was a G, proper loved his first album and all. And then... I do believe he like sacrificed his mum to the devil, you know. I do it's hard believe to talk that. About that recently, yeah, but, but this is funny, bro, because I told, told everyone who originally I said he sacrificed his mother, and they all laughed at me and said you're a you're a I conspiracy do, but nut. Then. But then next thing, Kanye said it himself. I showed you, and he was starting to cry, and he said I sacrificed my oh, mum to this. But it's when it's when you look when you're smart enough to look into stuff like that. I mean, it's talked about yeah. a lot when it comes to Hollywood and, and then, all like that. And then yeah. you see all the stuff mm-hmm. that he's talking about recently. What I find is funny as well. I play chess, you know, I, I'm a chess player. Yo, teach me how to play chess, uh, bro. Teach me how I, to play chess. I became a champion of chess I feel like when I was 12. like a chess player. Yeah. But I want to actually yeah, learn I how to love play chess, chess, bro. Thing. I'm on chess.com as well. Anyone want to add me? I'm called General Subadai. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, get him yeah. out of the fucking scalp <laughs> of the chess. Yeah, but what was I saying? Check in with chess with John Zoo. I know, I love the chess. But what was I going to tell you about there? What are you pointing at? We're running out of time. Yeah. Right, we're going to have to... Okay, that. We'll have to wrap it up. We'll wrap it up soon. Five, five minutes. <laughs> I'm telling you. Well, how long has it been on, eh? I love what done. It's done over an hour. It's done over an hour. I know. We should have had a cup of tea. Get me a cup of tea. Get me a cup of tea. I know. I know. And check this cup as well. I'm so what's, with this. what's the plans? What's the plans moving forward for yourself musically? What's what's sort of... I'm is go- there an ideal goal in mind, like, on the journey? Or are you just sort of... What? I'm working with Cali Cave Records and we're bringing a lot of shows here. We've got Snoop Dogg coming. We've got Class. the after party with Snoop Dogg. 
I'm um, selling <laughs> tickets for that all I want to go go and ask me. Yeah, bro, you, know. you you're coming. You can come. Standard with me. Certainly. Um, so we've got him there in March, and then we're going to be looking to get Central C. We're going to get Tion Wayne over. We're going to get a lot of people to Belfast. I'll get you supporting on a few of them. Certainly, certainly, and, certainly. Um, Let's get us tagged. We just got Meeks over there in December. Seen that in the. And, Lee, yeah. like, and he's a G. Yeah. yeah, and he was actually working there, hadn't he? And then Meeks has just shouted me back. He's asked me to come and support him in Dublin. Yeah. So I'm going there next class, Thursday. Me and Buzz Lightyear. Where is that? Go down in, um, the Academy in Dublin. Man, he's the Academy. Sold out as well. Every His whole tour sold out, like, sold out in minutes. That's so. Meeks. Nah, I'm not too clicked on, but that's Meeks, man. He was hanging out the airplane, isn't it? And yes. that's all. Yeah, the, the helicopter. Oh, that's fucking. And he's yeah. all, I watched that. Yeah. I've been watching them. Uh, so all, chicken shop dates. Yeah. There's he no, was on that the whole day. We were one with Amelia. When it comes to like, yeah, yeah, that's all through the mask, man. When it comes to music videos, bro, in the UK, no one touches mix. Um, like creatively as well. Have you not seen the other one where like he does the round table and it's just him sat at the round table, but he's all wearing different. Mean, yeah, like me, him. sick, bro. He's too sick. But and that, he's done one in a tank as well, driving through the tank, flipping <laughs> about. No. Class. But that, that's what I've had to realise too. It's like the visual is what pulls people into. Like it's it's bringing that song to life. But for me, it's genuinely took this long to be comfortable to yeah. be on camera. Like there is things where people reach out. I know you used to be reaching out to me, mate. Yes, I know, I know, I know. Your visuals, like, they've been, you know what I mean, not, not too much put into them. Like, I make all them myself. But that's, I just what, the, that's what makes them so like, authentic. I've got my big mate Shay with me today, and when we do, like, we do the big bonfire festivals and stuff, like, we do, you know what I mean, I make sure I bring videographers with me and we'll get the footage that way, like, but then when I, 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 like, I like an edit from somebody else's perspective on me, and then, you know what it's like, you, you're relying on people sometimes and it's hard and... You just you want to learn how to do it yourself, but it's taking the time to sit and learn how to do it yourself. So that's usually when it's a cup of tea, smoke a wee rabbit, sit, and I'm just I'm working away and I'm cutting up food each and I'm, I'm you're, you're trying to trying to just do the best with what you have until you learn to yeah. get better and do better type of thing. So of course. So what's your plans for the future? You got an album well, coming out? Um, I'm back working now for a way learn me. Um, it's just I'm not all I was living life. I was just for a long time. It was you were working towards this dream and. You, you know I mean, you weren't really getting any money from it. And I always said, if I was ever blessed to get money from the music, first thing, damn bro, get looked after. Family, everybody I else. I see you took them to Barcelona and Barca, all Barca, that. Barca, last week. And you're bro, a Barca Gattis fan? Mats and all. Yeah. I, uh, mate, see, do you know what's mad, right? I've actually, I mean, I'm a United man, right? Always have been. You're a United man? Oh, well. I used to be a United man until I moved to Manchester. And then I became a city fan because uh, oh, like, so you're you about now I'm a, a city proper fan, city. Bro. I'll tell you why I'm a city fan, bro. Listen, this is real, yeah? I was a United fan, went to Manchester as a wee kid. One of my dad's mates said, <laughs> they've got tickets to a United match. Went to the United match, and I was thinking, this is brilliant. And I went, come on, United. And a fella smacked me around the back of the head. <laughs> Before God, I looked around and I looked at him, and he goes, shut up, and trying to watch the match. And I thought, I fucking hate uh, this. I waited. <laughs> Two years later, I got a bit bigger and madder, uh, and all my mates were all nut jobs, and they all said, come to the city match where there's at Main Road. And guess where Main Road used to be? Um, the city stadium wasn't the Etihad Stadium. Oh, that I mean, that was in Main Road. That's in the ghetto. That's in Moss Side. In against uh, in the in yeah, amongst the ghetto. So we all went, snuck in, bro. Snuck into the Kipak Stadium. Um, I, I punched a police horse and everything. I was only twelve, and that was me. I just swore allegiance, bro, to to City. Then I thought City is my team, bro. You know. And you know what's funny? I'm it's shocked. Still to this day, buddy. A City man, proper City man. Bro, do you know what? Day. I'm shocked that did you say you support United. I don't no. think. Yeah, I don't know if you know this, what? but. Manchester City are paired with Glasgow Rangers and Manchester United are paired with Celtic. Did you know that? Uh, I, That's no, a fact, bro. That is a fact. No, no, but it's, it's one of them ones. Oh, it's big rooted, <laughs> but I say from United, that we used to, that used to take us to United matches all the time. Yeah, no, but obviously. But I say from that, it, oh, it's always been Barcelona. Now oh, it, nah, it's going to sound, people's going to watch that and be like, you're full of shit, you boy. What? My man, daughter's a United fan. Like she's a United fan. I don't care. I don't like, watch football really. You and know? really, so see to walk in that stadium last week, mate. That was like. First of all, yeah, we were just proper. we were just away for a few days, and then we we're talking about the idea. We're like, oh, well, we could maybe get the match. Um, got the tickets booked. And see, just walking in that camp, new new camp. Nah, look good right on your stories. Like, your, uh, and your well, dad looked like he was like, buzzing as well. Oh, I made class because it. See to be honest, mate. We. The one thing with my dad is when we're back home, 
he wouldn't really see much of my dad. And I used to see him a lot, maybe with kids' football and stuff, where he sort of hasn't been well this last while, and that's why that's really the only the only wee booster you can give him sometimes. Like, yo, dad, get the bags back, come on. Ah, never mind, come on, let's go. When you yeah. get him out, you get him around all our cultures. Hey, bro, tell you, don't I go home. I'm going to stay my book on our day, we we'll stay on our uh, day. And I'm like, we're going to have to go back <laughs> home at some point, but that... Nah. Like, to be able to give him them experiences and be, for him now to be able to see after all the years of talking it's came to fruition and it's now he sees young Spencer in full flight and he sees bro caught dripping in full flight so does our ma and it's like yo sons are finely and is this your brother then caught Bro's dripping bro's business caught dripping yeah, never man. caught slipping caught Gangs dripping it's a lifestyle yeah. any trip you want head to toe you head bro bro oh, have it on I'm going to tell Danny and all to promote that too he loves so his drip you know. what is it all designer gear and mate, all that bro source you anything you want but yes Jeez designer ta track suits tack fleeces shoes Jeez anything you want yeah uh, man bro came to me about a year ago like I said earlier I mean always been about chasing a dream Military. came to me about a year ago and was like bro have this idea what do you think Told me the name, come up with a whole idea for a logo and all himself. Me, mate, I, do you know what I mean? You want to run He's down the bottom of the street, I'm, I'm your man. No, man, I'm like, bro, do it. Why yeah, not? What man. have you got to lose? He's well, a legend. So, and I liked do your it. boxing as well, bro. I done well at the boxing the thing, as well. No, I, the MMA, done well the MMA, MMA took a back seat. Nah, yeah. was, no, I mean, what was, it, was that an MMA event? Uh, oh, I mean, what was Fox it called in the end, bro? Was it Clan Wars? Oh, or was it Clan Wars? Oh. Yeah, because I went to a boxing event after that too, so I got them both mixed up. Have you ever been to the actual UFC? Like, I know you like Bam Bam. Oh, Bam Bam's my boy, bro. Um, I've watched UFC since I was a kid. I've never actually been to one. I went to Tyson Fury there. I went to the Wembley Stadium oh. to watch Tyson. Got a private box and all. That Holy was gangster. Class. And I went and watched um, Ricky Hatton. When I was younger, remember Ricky Hatton? The Hitman, I oh, loved hit man, him, the Hitman. Fucking loved him, bro. He was Classic. my man. Um, but I've never been to an actual UFC event yet. I'd love to fucking go, bro. And Let's get Dana on the phone, Dana. I'm telling that you, phone bro. Picked up, I'm telling you. Do you watch the UFC, bro? Mate, I used to actually really watch see when it was like uh, Forrest Griffin and... Yeah, back um, in the day then, oh, Forrest made, and like, all. like all them type of content. Like I used to actually Forrest really Griffin watch was it. an animal. I love, Forrest, love that bro. boy, like, and you'd know I me. Mean, you'd rampage, and you'd yeah, get all these Leona Machida, and you'd fucking you know, yeah. George Saint Pierre, and all these different type of boys. Like, and I used to watch it then. Like, I wouldn't, no, I mean, I wouldn't be a yeah. religious fan of it, but I used to watch it then, and then sort of came away from it, and then the McGregor fella, you know what I mean? He pulls yeah. you back in the done they like. Know what I mean? Yeah, I That's a story. Like bro, he fucking yeah. died. When that boy talks, you listen. Like ah, uh, stuff. Connor See, when he got that boy Mayweather on a count of three, fuck yeah. the Mayweather. He yeah. just does a car. What money's on the table? And I think that is another, it's another symbol of like, you lot of high many prod support McGregor. Of course. Because you're just looking at him like yeah. he's from a couple of hours down the road. Yeah, of course. Like, no, I mean, we would, you yeah, can see him when he's in the moments, how you would react. Maz is standing away in front of thousands of yeah. you know what I mean? And you're like, and then you can tell when he's in the press conference, he's lit the board and all. Like, he's just out living the life. Yeah, like, he's he's, still, funny. Thing he's is, very entertaining. And you think about it too, like, the one you get now is, ah, he's done these path that he hasn't got the same hunger. Of course he doesn't have a safe sitting on half a billion. Uh, for fuck's sake, you're coming yeah, from halfway there. down Dublin, like us. Like I you're... know, just thank God he's still fighting for us. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, no one, if I could get in that cage or somebody could catch me with one, like, or I could go in and make a fortune. Or, but he's, no, I mean, it's a representation of somebody who's got it from the bottom, close to us. So what do you think of John Jones coming back? Do you yeah, think I'll... he's going to beat Cyril Gann or what? I don't really, like I know that, but there's a whole there's this whole debate about the Bones fella. Like, what's this whole steroid thing about filming and all that? What I don't no, really, I'm not too bullshit, in bro. On it's that. bullshit. Listen, like you get Nate people so divided like over. Like Nate Diaz said, though, they were all on steroids, bro. If you said you watched it back in the day, fuck's sake, literally <laughs> all of them were on it. Uh -huh. MMA was a fucking steroid, like um, fucking thing. That's what it was. So. John Jones, I don't even think he actually did take it. I think, so. Do you ever get I think so it was some tainted fucking thing or whatever. I do, do you ever feel genuinely like believe Sometimes him? it's maybe because he, you know what I mean, he's one of the ones that's that good. It's like they're just looking something Ex to say about you. They're just looking an excuse. It's sure, like, the first time he beat the first time he beat Daniel Cormier, Cormier goes, You, you just sniff cocaine. No, he goes, Exactly. I'm like <laughs> fucking whores and sniffing cocaine. I still beat you. Oh, still that's what he said there. You know, so I mean, the truth is, John Jones was the GOAT, bro, you know? And, um, oh, bro, if he comes back love. and wins his, his heavyweight belt against Cyril. Did you see Cyril Gan versus Bam Bam? This is what annoyed me as well, bro. If Bam Bam had just knocked out Cyril Gan, it would have been John Jones versus Bam Bam. You with me, bro? Mm. But it wasn't. And Bam Bam nearly knocked Cyril uh, Gan out, nearly knocked him out. But then uh, Cyril Gan started picking him off with body shots and all, you know? So I think John Jones is going to show, show the world that he's still the, the champ. I think he'll become a double champ.
I do. It'd be class, mm -hmm. but he, I think McGregor's coming back here. Like, yeah, no, and McGregor's coming back to fight Michael Chandler. On, I'm worried that. about him because Chandler's a fucking animal. I love McGregor though, and I'll always root for him. You know what oh, I mean? I do want to see him win. See but the, what are they doing before something? Yeah, they, they're doing the, the fight. Ultimate Fighter. Ah, oh, the Ultimate. Oh, before yeah. they actually. Fight. To be fair, I thought it was just that. I didn't think they were actually fighting. Each no, they're fighting each other at the end of it. McGregor done that before as well. That's how he got Arkham in and all. Oh, yes, and then did yes, you hear yes. done him the dirty? Bad that. Did you hear about Arkham? No, was he involved in all that bus stuff? Or I know it was to do with Khabib, but no, it was, was it on Arkham no, having to do that? He or? was. Arkham got slapped off Khabib's team and Connor got a a, <laughs> a private jet load of his mates and they flew over and right, threw the bus through the window because he loved his mate. He wasn't having anyone to disrespect his mate. Apparently, though, um, Arkham tried to sue him over his um, um, whiskey company, said, I give you the right. idea and I want a percentage or something. That's so McGregor fun, like, um, had to take him to court, but apparently then it all went in McGregor's favour and I thought, damn right too. That's the just, amount that he'd done for him. Like, but you that's know, the team. See, even that, just to speak that, like, it's him trying to do that, like, that, that is what you start dealing with in this world. Like, yeah. It's like people become weirdos and it's like, they're not face, face to face. They'll yeah. get your account shut down, they ban your leave, they'll yeah. try and claim rights to your whiskey company, they'll do all yeah. sorts of shit. Yeah. They'll say, you owe me this, you owe me that, because yeah. they don't want to work for nothing. But yeah. it's like, you, at that point, you're trying to discredit somebody, and there's no, that's the thing that gets me with these type of people. They're not really built like that, but there's no real consequence, it seems to be, on what, because if you're standing in front of me, it's not going to happen. Yeah. You're not going to disrespect me like that, because I'm not a hard man, but I'm just not going to take it, but you'll revert to that. Yeah. Oh, shut accounts down and be weird on the internet and leave stupid comments. See, you get these horror people that leave these negative comments and see if you actually answer back. I'm sorry, mate. I actually love you to be fair. I just didn't think I was going to get your attention. 100%. Bro, it happened to me all the be, time. Just be like, what's crack? Me? It's it happy, all good. All no, all you're shite. I hate you. You're the worst. Yeah. i never forget this, right? So on SoundCloud <laughs> years ago, mate, these two Americans got me, right? Put out this song. I think it was called Pat Pat Don't Stop or something. Shake, right? Anyway. <laughs> so these two Americans got me, right? This song. And they rinsed me. They said I was the worst rapper ever. Ever, <laughs> ever, like, yeah. mate, I left that computer and I cried my, I was yeah. like, fuck <laughs> me, this is me, ever, like, like everybody yeah, that's yeah. rapped, like, yeah. ever, like, you are the worst, and I'm just like, uh, two weeks later, I'm like, why, why should I bar listening to them? Like, they're probably never going to meet me a day in their life. Uh, if I listen that now, we'll ensure, we listen to everybody and anybody about it, ring him. Yeah. And that's just of it, you, it's it's that's what I would say to like anybody that's watching us or supporting our music, like that's necessary. That's almost needed more than the positive. Yes. Because y y without that, you're not getting any. You wouldn't want to have a career, really, when you think about it, that was all positive. Because it's not yeah. real. But I noticed that too. I made a point to myself. I thought it's it's disrespectful to all your um, to all of the people that are saying great things about you. Say if 20 people say you're amazing and one of them says, you're shit. See, for me to home in on the you're shit oh, and go why? into him and reply to him. Oh, why? You're sort of like, you're encouraging hatred because they think, oh, well, he replies to the hate. <laughs> he doesn't, right, we get ignored when oh, we support I, I him. Know, you know, know, it's true. They're like, starting in the corner yeah. being like, yo, we're still with you, but like, don't, yeah. don't forget it. Like, yeah. Don't forget us. Yes, like, it's like, exactly. well, don't forget you, but it's that yeah. side of know they can get to your taste because you are just human and you get caught up in the negative but you have to remind yourself what you're doing how long you've been doing it why you're doing it yeah what, what are we doing this for at one point at one point you were doing it for therapy weren't you yeah most of the time that's what most people's at that's what it is bro we we'll have thought. to bring it back to the oh. roots of it and forget all of that bullshit and focus on yourself and think you know what and it's about life experience too and i can't you can't you can't force it bro you yeah. with me? So like Force you said, you just fit. yeah, you just crack on and enjoy it and then enjoy the ride, you know? That's it. Even I, to be honest, mate, with a music for myself, like I I you experiment more than ever. Yeah. That's always been my thing. Like a wee cousin runs his own gaming channel and like it's been a dream of his for years, mate. Yeah. Uh, and it's called the NI Gamer ninety five and it, that's a big thing, like, but it, I'd be filled with pride because that's wee cuz oh like that's exactly. not you know I mean I know what that is to the world but to me that's my wee cuz like yeah. I'd be being more pride that's why I tell them all the time don't be afraid to experiment with your content damn right put that song out like yeah. do that song in that accent or what just try different yes. things because what will happen is once you reach a point of certification you're now validated right yeah. to know who you are they'll box you in there yes that's right and they will box you in there and if you can't yeah, get out true. of it and build your own boxes you're fucked for lack of better words because they'll hold you to hell that forever some people will always look at me like back with a bang son of Ulster straight out of Belfast yeah. the girls will be like shy love yeah I like Shy Love. Shy no, Love's probably my favourite one. Boy I do yeah, like that one, bro. I like when the girls sing it back to me. Does any of you, <laughs> does any of you make, uh, do you make any of your own beats? That's what I wanted to ask um, you. 
No. Are, 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 we'll just we'll tie him. We'll tie we'll, we'll him. Pe- yeah. Pick beats and then it's a mixture, mate. Pick beats yeah. and tie him. We'll that's really what the I'm next moving, step, man. moving towards, yes. mate. Tanning, original sound. That's tannin, what I would like to hear from producers, you, Producers, videographers, whatever. If you're passionate about what you do, I don't give a fuck what it is. You could be selling a boat to a fisherman. Don't care. If you're as passionate as I am, give me a shout. Yeah. In my lane and we'll tie in. If we're to make going? magic and not only collaborate just for the sake of doing it. That's yeah. what I can't stand. You get I'm sure you get it a million times more than me. You don't need you on a song, you boy. Yeah. For me to put you on a song, what are you doing for me? But that yeah. sounds egotistical, but we're just being nah, honest out here. Nah, 100%. If I'm lending you my brand, what can you yeah. give? I can certainly help but give a reach and heart, like a helping hand, but what can you... It's, it's business, and that's what I had to learn too. This is music business as well. Yeah. And a it's lot really of people, it's never... Because it's never been took to the MT, but it's always been... Uh, we saw this on the EMCs in the party. He's good, but you only want to hear it when you're sort of... Like, like, oh, it's never been seen to be like... Where now, even what you are doing down here, there's a scene out here now. We run shit out here now. <laughs> We're in the driver's seat. I'm the fucking pilot. Spence fella, P-R-O-D, I. <laughs> and whatever I say, I say, and we won't do about it. Nam. But when Damn you say man. that, people be like, who do you think you are, mate? I think I am who I am. No, who I am. I've been doing this shit that long, blood, sweat and tears, over fucking 14 years. And if you know me, then you'll know that, and you know it's my life. And I seen a comment the other day, we put a TikTok out for the Belfast Dublin Connection. Uh, bro was like, do a TikTok. I was like, oh, I certainly. Does it, off a cusp. I'm always nervous, as I say, doing things like that. But I'm in the moment, I'm going along with it. Some people's rinsing me, I'm wearing gloves. Got the goalkeeper gloves on. He's got them goalkeeper yeah. gloves on. When you have a freestyle at seven, but you have a match at eight. Uh, and I'm yeah. like, right, it was funny at first comment. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> then this old boy leaves a comment, and he was like, I thought young Spencer was having a laugh with a rapping boy. He thinks he's a full serious gangster. Uh, you think I'm having a laugh out here, yeah. boy? <laughs> you think I'm a four days in a row, no sleep, having eight, like yeah. put strip, like doing things in my, like it's mental, like drive myself insane. Yeah. Like the way I look at it now is we go through hell, we put ourselves through hell to give you a taste of heaven. Jeez. That's really what it is. Because see that wee moment where when you listen to our music, uh, you maybe shed a wee tear or it makes you smile or we make you feel what we want you to feel from it. You can't tell me that's not us wrapping our arms around you in that moment. But for us to give you that, just be conscious of we have to deal with the fucking heartbreak that comes with it. We have to go through the hell in order to give you that. Don't lose sight of that when you're demanding this and you're demanding that and you'll do this but and do that and don't be doing songs like that and all this and I don't like stuff like that and my dad told me right he laughed he watches this right my dad said to me all week we're talking about shy love and he was like shy I was like yeah. girls don't think that yeah. but shy but and I'm like but it's just not for you Yeah, yeah. that's what he's very old school it's like not everything's for you and that's alright yeah. but what's for you on that miss you <laughs> Yeah, that's a dream. What's for you on that, Messi? And because He's you... He's running all that way, lovely, dumb. He's not going on all that, though. What's wrong with you? Because you don't <laughs> like it doesn't mean I'm not going to do it for who does like it. Yeah. Somebody's always going to want to hear back with a bang. And you know what? Manager. And no matter what you do, there's always going to be someone not liking that. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. So, but as long as true. you, any artist that's rapping, singing, producing, whatever you're doing, if you're taking a chance on yourself, just know, as long as you're authentically you and what you're doing, Nobody can ever take that away from you. 100%. It's your story. And what's going to happen? Your time's going to pass and you're going to be able to say, I've done that. Because let me tell you what will happen. Time is going to pass quicker than you think. And it's the only thing that's not promised to anybody. Bro. And you can't be 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 out here <laughs> and thinking, oh, I remember back in the day. I used to back in the day. You don't want to be one of them back in the day, cons. Don't be a back in the day. Don't be a back in the day type of part. Don't do that. You're starting in the same bar you're in 30 years ago, and it's all, I mean, mum, you done that, 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 that. What was it, back, back, banging, or back, back, with a bang, or so, or so, shy, shy or so? Fuck that, nah. I'm going to make sure the whole world knows, the whole world's on to this wave now. And see, when it comes to rap, hip-hop, whatever, whatever you want, any genre, whatever you want, with all sorts of DJs out here and all, somatic, with everybody making moves out here, come see us now. Give us a shout at our lane. You're going to need to come tie in with us now all around Belfast and all around Dublin and all around the whole country on whatever side you want. Come see us. And if you need to see me, just shout P-R-O-D. <laughs> <laughs> and if you Robert, can't get me big, John will. Fucking love the Gen- what a G. Genuinely, but thank you very Bro, much. Bro, it was a fucking honour having you on. Thank you as well for looking after the girls. They loved it. it. At all. Give all the girls flags and hats and Anna fucking coat and everything. Anna You're Anna a G, bro. Keep it up. Certainly, mate. Yeah, as I say, we're moving now, we're moving in the stage of 
Young Spencer experience. What 100%. that is is first we're gonna we're moving into different markets, more of a live show, and we're literally starting off first show we ran there December. Mm-hmm. Maybe 20, 30 people bought tickets. Laugh at me if you want. That's 20, 30 people yeah, bought tickets. 100%. It comes from an open mic. That comes from me standing in the mirror. Matter of fact, Damn standing right. in the fucking mirror, trying to make me believe it. So for anybody to buy tickets, support it, buy the merch. Just know it genuinely means the world to me. You might not always hear from me on social media and all that, but it doesn't be forgotten. It means the world to me. And that's what the next phase is. European worldwide. Young Spencer experience. Yeah. Next four up, Belfast, Dublin, London, Glasgow. Sold out. Tie in with me. Shit. And then we'll move all around Europe <laughs> and all around the world with a flag on the back. Yeah. And if you're good to me, I'm good to you. And it's fuck me, it's fuck you. Across the board. Don't care who you are, family, friend or stranger. And if you're as pissed as I am, pay when we give me a shout. Fucking make magic, we'll do it. There it, G. There you have it, folks. Certainly, folks. God bless Enjoy. you. Yeah, man. Respect. Enjoy. See you later. <laughs>